tell you how to interpret EBG, uh, sorry, the ECG. Uh, I'm not a cardiologist, but I'm teaching for the junior doctors, yeah? So you should know, as a junior doctor, you should know how to at least the basics of ECG, how to read the basic basics ECG. Uh, are you ready? All of you can see the board? Online doctors, can you see? Can you see the board? Can you see me? Online doctors, can you see the board and can you see me? Yes. All right, okay, okay, fine, that's fine. If you have any problem, let me know. Right, what is that? What is he on the board? ECG. Are you sure? <laughs> so that is the ECG. Now in the hospital when you work, when you work in hospital, a lot of times you know you'll be shown ECG. Uh, who keeps showing ECG in the hospital? Nurses. Nurses. Nurses will keep on showing ECG because whatever the problem the patient has got, even if the patient has got a constipation, they do an ECG and they come and show to you, Dr. ECG, Dr. ECG. Okay, so you will have to see at least 10 ECG almost every day. So what do you do? Imagine nurse gave you so many ECGs, what do you do in the hospital? Yeah, collect all the ECG and put it in the bag and come home and then read ECG at all and tell her that I will tell you tomorrow. <laughs> So, is it important to know the ECG? Yes. yes. Okay. So, as a junior doctor, it's very, very important. You must know how to read ECG. What if you are a psychiatric assistant working in the psychiatric department? Should you not read ECG? Yes. Why? Yes. You know that even a psychiatric patient, they can have a heart. Yeah, they have a heart and they can have a heart attack. They can have a mind. So you should know how to read ECG. Even if you have psychiatric research, you should know how to manage medical emergencies. So you must know ECG. So that means whichever department you are going to work, you have no excuse for not knowing ECG. You must know how to read ECG. Now imagine in the hospital you are working in some department, whichever department, medical, surgical department, whichever it is, or any department. Nurse comes and show you the ECG and they say, Doctor, can you please sign the ECG? Can you please sign there? Okay. What are you going to do? Where will you sign? Where are you going to sign? Yeah, on the ECG. Yeah? Before you sign, do you want to know anything? Do you want to do anything? Yes. If the nurse tells you sign, what does that mean? Read the ECG. Read the ECG. And that means once you sign the ECG, you are responsible for that patient. <laughs> Okay, her responsibility finishes when she shows the ECG to you. So if, if, you are, uh, if you read the ECG wrong, if you did not take a proper action, you will be held responsible for it. So that means before you sign the ECG, what do you do? Sorry? Can you read this ECG? Yes or no? Yes or no? Before you read any investigation, what is the first thing you have to look at all time? What is the blood result, the x-ray, is ECG, what is that? Patient identity. Is there a patient identity here? No. Will you read this ECG? No. Give it back to her. I am not going to read this ECG. So what is the first thing she should have done? Name. Label it. She should have labeled it. So once you have done ECG, it's there as well as taking the ECG, their job is to label it properly. So normally ECG machines, they have a, the, where you can type the names, the patient detail name, the date of birth, the hospital number, all these things will be there. Where you want to type it, it will be automatically printed on the ECG paper. The so first thing you need to look at the, the patient identity. Without a patient identity, you are not going to comment on that. Okay, don't ever sign that without having a patient detail. So what is the next thing? So you tell the nurse, please, either you write the patient detail there on the ECG paper or you should have printed patient detail, details already, otherwise I can't read that. So what else? What else you want to know? Date. Is it important to check the date? Yes. Yeah, the date also either printed or the nurse should have written with their pen on the ECG paper. Without the date, again, if you comment on that, uh, imagine this the ECG was done two days ago and they're showing the ECG today. So will you, can you be held responsible for it? What happened two days ago? No. So this should be the ECG done today. So what else? 
you want to check time. time also not just the date can the ECG change in minutes yes. yes so they should have written the time also so without the patient detail without the date without the time do not read the ECG okay so what else you want to check before you read the ECG and the else you want to check if it's done correctly or not. whether it's done correctly or not how do you check whether it's done correctly or not <laughs> sorry <laughs> First, you look at the quality. Quality. Is it clearer? Can you see all the waves properly? Yes or no? This is much clearer. If you can't see that, then is your problem in your vision. <laughs> waves are clearer. It's in a straight line. It's not going up and down. So it's a straight line. So you can see all the waves properly there. So that's a, the, the quality of ECG is fine. Uh, what is the other thing you need to know whether it is uh, done properly or not, recorded properly or not? You should also check the the amplitude, whether the amplitude is right or wrong. Okay, so if you look at the ECG, can you see the boxes there? Yes. On the left hand corner, you'll see the boxes. This is the amplitude. The amplitude has to be set right. You know, when they record ECG, there are machines. In the machine, there are buttons where you need to press a button and set the amplitude amplitude has to be right how do you check the amplitude the amplitude should be set at two large box of sight yes the amplitude should be set at two large box can you see there are boxes here ECG ECG you got large boxes and small boxes all of you know that every five small box has a large box all of you know that again every five five small boxes has a large box so what you see here, you see here these boxes, are they large boxes or small box? They are, they are the large box. There are five small small boxes inside which is not very clearly visible here. So the height, the height should be at least two large boxes. Can you see that? Is it two large boxes? Yes. If you see, it is, if you count totally, it's a, here is one box, again half box there, again half box here. So it is two large boxes. So uh, you must see that that amplitude every time. That should be set at two large boxes. Can you see here? That's one large or two large boxes. Should be set at two large boxes. Uh, now here, what's the problem? The amplitude is set only one large box. If you set the amplitude only one large box, what will happen? The amplitude of the ECG will look very small. The QRS complex will be very short. Height will be very short. Then you can get confused with the ventricle, uh, the way of the ventricular dysfunction, because sometimes the ventricular dysfunction you'll see uh, you'll see a very short QRS complexes. So it's not the, the ventricular dysfunction; it is the ECG has not been recorded properly. Okay, so that's why you got to make sure that it is set at two large boxes. Again, here for the problem here, <coughs> it's very tall. Can you see the amplitude is the set very tall, four large boxes. What can happen if you set the amplitude very large to too many boxes? The QRS complex will look very tall. And where you get tall QRS complexes? Hypertrophy, ventricular hypertrophy. You might get confused with the ventricular hypertrophy. It's not actually ventricular hypertrophy. It is that the person who recorded the ECG did not set the amplitude properly. So that's the reason you first thing is to make sure the amplitude has, set been, has been set properly. Okay, so that's one thing you need to look at or the other thing you want to look at. The speed. Uh, the speed, the, you know that the paper keeps rotating when they are recording the ECG. The, when you, the paper is moving, the speed has to be set a proper speed. That should be 25 millimeter per second. Online doctor, switch off your mind please. Online doctor, switch off your mind. Okay, so the speed should be set at 25 millimeter per second. <laughs> Okay, so if the, the paper is moving very fast, if the paper moves very fast when you're recording ACG, it looks like as a bradycardia. Actually, it's not bradycardia, it's the paper is moving very fast. Or if the paper is moving very slowly when you record the ECG, it looks like a tachycardia. Uh, because the paper is moving very slowly, it's not actually tachycardia. So these two things you must look at, the amplitude and the speed. Speed will be written on the ECG paper. Can you see here? 25 millimeter per second. That also has to be set properly. So three things to look, uh, so tell me what are things you need to look at? First, the first thing you look at, patient identity, date, time, and the quality, and then the amplitude and the speed. 
So these things has to be set properly to for you to comment on the ECG. Now imagine the nurse gave you the ECG, you checked all those things, though you are happy with those things. Are you going to sign? Remember once you sign the sponsor for that patient. So before you sign, what do you want to ask the lady? What do you want to ask the nurse? History. History. Why did you record this ECG? So she may say, doctor, patient with chest pain or shortness of breath is unconscious, whatever it is. So she may give some reasons. So you want the history, brief history. What else do you want to know? What is the most important thing you want to know? What is the most important thing you want to know? Whenever you read ECG, usually what happens in the hospital when you are seeing some patient, you are seeing some other some patient, and nurses would have recorded ECG for some other patients, and they'll come and show it to you. So that means you have to prioritize now. Should you continue this patient whom you are seeing now, or should you leave this patient and go and see that patient? So you have to prioritize. How do you know? How do you prioritize? Has he having any pain now? Like chest pain or something? As your chest pain now? Okay, what else? What else? Other than the symptoms, we already told you symptoms. What else? What do you want to know whether it's conscious or not? Yes. Yes. Imagine this patient is conscious. What you're seeing the patient is conscious, the other patient is unconscious. What do you do? You want to go to that patient. So the other thing you need to ask the nurse is, is he conscious or not? Is he talking? Is he conscious or not? What else do you want to know? How is he prioritized? Anyone heard of vital signs? Why do you call vital signs the vital signs? Because they are vital. Okay, so ask what is the pulse, what is the blood pressure? Okay, so with that at least you will know how to prioritize. So tell me, what are the things you are going to ask the nurse? History. History, brief history. Conscious, Conscious or not? Vital signs. Pulse MEP. At least that you should ask. So that you can at least prioritize. Okay? So then you look at the ECG and then comment on the ECG, whatever you think. Uh, if it is nothing urgent, you tell the, pay, uh, the nurse there, there is nothing urgent, you sign it. We probably should take the ECG and put it in the folder there. Then you probably will see the patient later on or maybe some other doctor will see the patient later on. But if it is something urgent, if, you're, uh, if you prioritize, if you think that patient has the priority now, you have to leave this patient and go and see this patient yourself. If you are too busy, then you will have to tell your colleague to go and see. Or you tell the nurse, you know, I am busy, I can't leave the patient. I know this is also emergency, that's also emergency, I can't leave, so can you please call one of my colleagues. So the nurse will go to other doctors, say that this doctor is busy. Okay, so now, so now then you have to start reading the ECG. How to read the ECG? How to read the ECG? There are two types of ECG. What are the two types of ECG? Dual lead ECG and rhythm strip. Okay, all of you know that, two lead ECG. When you record ECG, we have two leads, which are how many limb leads and how many chest leads? Six limb leads and six chest leads. Name all the chest leads. V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. They are all the chest leads. And which are the limb leads? There are six limb leads. Lead 1, lead 2, lead 3. Then AVR, AVL, AVF. They are also limb leads. They are augmented limb leads. So this is the 12 lead ECG. So all the ECG, the, the, the leads will be placed in the ECG. It will be placed always the same way. 1, 2, 3, then AVR, AVL, AVF, then V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. The 12 lead ECGs will be placed in that way, always. Then if you look at this, this is the rhythm strip, yeah? This is the rhythm strip taken in the lead 2, lead 2. Now this is also lead 2, this is also lead 2 here. What is the difference? Longer. Yeah, in this lead, in the twelve lead ECG, the, the ECG segments are very short. It's a very so lead two is only from here to here. Whereas here in the lead two, same ECG here, but from here all the up to here, that's a lead two. It's a long strip. Why do you want a long strip? If you want to look for arrhythmia, if you look at a very short strip, you will miss the arrhythmias. Or if you want to look for heart blocks, all these things, you'll miss it if you look at a very short segment. That's why you must have a very long segment. So in fact, all these three, this is taken V1, V2, V5, all these are long rhythm strips. You can, if you want to use the rhythm strip, you can use either one of the three, whichever one, one of the three. Wherever you think the ECG is much clearer, waves are prominent, much clearer, you can use that one. Most of the time, we use the lead two because waves are much clearer and prominent in lead two. 
So we look at only one lead which is lead 2. But if the waves are not clearer, then you can either use a V1 or V5, whichever the rhythm tip it is. Okay. So now this ECG is a combination of both. That's a two lead ECG and the rhythm tip. So you have both the type of ECG. <coughs> now, ECG has got boxes which you know, large box and a small box. So every five small box, the horizontally as well as vertically, there are five uh, small boxes. So that means every five small box, will, there's a large box with a thick line there. Now you should know the height, what is the, the Again, you need to know what represents the horizontal line and what represents the vertical line. What represents the horizontal line? The duration. The duration. The, the horizontal line represents the duration, whereas vertical line represents the amplitude. Amplitude. Okay? So, if you look at the one small box, the height of one small box is one millimeter. The height of one small box is one millimeter. That means what is the height of the one large box then? 5 millimeter. The height of one large box is 5 millimeter. Okay? And also the, the horizontal line, one small box is 0 0.04 second. One small box is 0 0.04 second. That means one large box is into 5. Because 5 uh, small boxes, that will be 0.2 seconds. Okay? Uh, now this one, what kind of pathology, what kind of problems you can see in the ECG? Can you see the structural problems of the heart in the ECG? Can you see structural problems? Yeah. If there is a matter of regurgitation, can you see matter of prolapse? You can't. What investigation do you have to do for that? <coughs> Echocardiography. So that means what kind of pathologies you can see in the ECG? There are two main pathologies, there are many, but two main. One is a circulatory problem and other one, other one is a conduction problem. Uh, two main pathologies, one is a circulatory problem and other one is a conduction problem. First we'll talk about the circulatory problem. All of us know that heart needs its own blood supply for it to survive. So how does the heart is, what is the blood supply for the heart muscles? Coronary arteries. Where the coronary artery come from? Iota. Yeah, from the left ventricle, aorta comes out. At the base of the aorta, there's a right coronary artery and the left coronary arteries. Okay, there are two arteries. They supply the heart muscles. Now, the heart has got different walls. Okay, so the, 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 these coronary arteries, the, they supply the different walls of the heart. So you should know which are the walls of the heart. How many walls the heart has got? Mainly four, which is anterior, Posterior, inferior, and lateral. Anterior, posterior, inferior, and lateral. There are four main walls. There's one more wall which is septal. If you want to consider that, so but we can leave it for our as a junior level. We just consider the anterior, posterior, inferior, and lateral. There's a four main walls. So that means which wall the heart hasn't got? Which other walls the heart hasn't got? No medial wall. It has got no superior wall. Okay. Now, you should again know which artery supplies which wall. The right coronary artery, right coronary artery. The right coronary artery mainly, it mainly supplies the inferior wall. Can you see that? Inferior wall and the posterior wall. Understood? The right coronary artery mainly supplies the inferior wall and the posterior wall. It has got no named branches. It has got branches, but no named main branches. The right of coronary that does not have any named branches, though it has got branches. <coughs> now the left coronary, left coronary heart has got two branches. They got named branches. That's the left anterior descending artery and the left circumflex artery. So it's got two art the branches, left coronary. Artery. That's the left anterior descending and the left circumflex artery. Left anterior descending artery, it supplies the anterior wall of the heart. Left anterior descending artery, it supplies the anterior wall of the heart, whereas the left circumflex artery supplies the lateral wall of the heart. Okay, so 
uh, these are the main walls with the supply. Okay, so now, the, now if you understand the circulation problem, there are two main circulation problems. Which are the two main circulation problems? Ischemia and infarction. So, what do you mean your ischemia? Ischemia is a partial obstruction, not complete, partial obstruction in the coronary artery. There's a partial obstruction in the coronary artery which causes reversible damage, a reversible damage to the heart muscle. That means the damage to the heart muscle is reversible. That is ischemia. What is infarction? Infarction is due to complete blockage in the coronary artery. It's a complete blockage in the coronary artery which causes irreversible damage that causes irreversible damage to the heart muscle. That's infarction. So infarction is a complete blockage. So which is more dangerous, ischemia or infarction? Infarction, infarction is more dangerous than ischemia. So now, <coughs> you tell me which wall there will be infarction. Imagine, imagine there's a blockage. There's a blockage in the main part of the right coronary here. Proximal part of the right coronary. Which wall there will be infarction? Inferior wall and posterior wall. Because I told you the right coronary artery supply the inferior wall and the posterior wall. So if there is a infarction, uh, sorry, if there is a blockage here, before it branches out to inferior and the posterior wall branches, before it branches out, if there is a blockage here, so there will be infarction in the both the walls, inferior as well as posterior wall. But if there is a blockage, here, after it branches out, after it branches out, it supplies only the inferior wall. Which wall is an infarction? Okay. Only inferior wall infarction. Or if there is a blockage in the branch which supplies only the posterior wall, that means block, that means infarction only, will only be in the posterior wall. Okay? So that's the right coronary. Then the left coronary. Imagine if there is a blockage in the left main stem, left coronary artery main stem here. Before it branches out in the left anterior descending and left circumflex. Which wall is infarction? Anterior wall and lateral wall. So you get antero lateral infarction. But if there is a blockage only in the left anterior descending artery, which wall is infarction? Anterior wall infarction. Or if there is a blockage only in the left circumflex. Then there is a lateral wall infarction. Okay? So it's very rare you will get an anterior and inferior infarction because the blood supply is a different arteries and also there will not be a blockage at the same time in the right and the left could not be. It doesn't happen like that. But there are some cross circulations. You can get you can get to the two walls anterior and inferior, you can get, but they are very rare. So that means what is the commonly which are the, the infarction you can get? Only anterior wall infarction, only lateral infarction, only inferior wall infarction, only posterior wall infarction. If there is a combination in uh, walls, which are the combination walls commonly possible? Anterior <coughs> lateral and inferior posterior. Are you clear? Other combinations not common because the blood supply is like that. Now, other one very important to understand is a conduction problem. Or if you know that the heart generates its own impulses, where are the impulses are produced? SA node. Where is the SA node? In the right atrium. In the right atrium. SA node in the superior part of the right atrium, where the superior vena cava joins the right atrium, that's where the SA node is. The SA node produces impulses. Then SA, the impulses are transmitted to the AV node. Then it reaches the AV node, atrium ventricular node. From the AV node, there is a bundle of his, bundle of his, which buffer is into right bundle branch and the left bundle branch. Okay? So then it, the impulses reach the ventricle. So all of you understood, the impulse produced in the cyanotial node, which is in the atria. So then the impulse goes to the, all the right atrium. A right atrium and the left atrium, impulse goes right and left atrium, then it reaches the atrioventricular node, atrioventricular node. From the atrioventricular node, impulse will go to the ventricle through bundle of his first. Bundle of his branches into right bundle branch and the left bundle branch. We supply the right ventricle and the left ventricle. Now, 
the impulses are produced in the SA node at the rate about 100 to 120 per minute. About 100 to 120 impulses are generated in the SA node. But what is the normal heart rate? 75, around 70, 75. What happened to all other impulses then? What is produced there? It's all blocked in the AV node. It's blocked in the AV node. Okay? So, uh, that means that, that because what is the normal function of the AV node? What is the normal function? To delay the atrial ventricular conduction. It delays the conduction from the atria into the ventricle. It delays the conduction. That means all the impulses produced in the SA node will not reach the ventricle. If all the impulse produced in the SA node reaches the ventricle, then our heart rate would have been 100 to 120 per minute. Because the AV node delays the conduction, some of the impulses will not reach the ventricle. Only about 75 impulses reach the ventricle. That's why our normal heart rate is about 75. Okay, so one more important thing you must understand is the from the sinoatrial node, impulses reach the, uh, the atrial ventricular node. Uh, that is through the atrial walls. There is no direct electrical wire connection between SA node to the AV node. Means, all of you no electrical wire, yeah? So there is no direct electrical wire connection between the SA node to the AV node. That means impulses has to reach the AV node through the atrial walls, through the walls. Okay, so that means electricity can pass through. Electricity can pass through the walls, atrial walls, but the electricity cannot, cannot come from atria into the ventricular walls directly through the walls because there's an insulation. All in doctor, switch off your mic, please. Because there's an electrical insulation between the atria and ventricle. There's something very important to understand. That means electricity cannot come from atria into the ventricle directly through the walls. Through the walls, it cannot go. That means there's only one way. What? Right, okay. There's only one way electricity can reach from the atria into the ventricle is through the bundle of his. The bundle of his is like an electrical wire. So that means there's an electrical wire from, from AV node onwards. AV node onwards, there's an electrical wire. So, which is initially is a bundle of his, then which is perfect is the right and left bundle branch. So, remember these are like electrical wires. They have like a wire system. Whereas, sinoatrial node, AV node, there is no wire. But from there, there onwards, there is a wire. So, as I told you, the impulses, electrical impulses cannot come from atria into the ventricular wall directly. That is the only way electricity can come from atria into the ventricle is through the bundle of his. So now, so that means the impulses are produced in the atrial, uh, sinoatrial node, then it has to go in this direction, yeah? So you need to understand in which direction normally the electricity flows. So it goes from here, as you know, to that and down that direction, can you see? Electricity normally flows in that direction, okay? So mainly towards the left yeah it is produced from the right side it is going down towards the left side this is a normal electrical axis okay the normal electricity goes in that direction so that's the normal axis the normal axis from the right towards the <coughs> left all of you understood that okay. so <coughs> now what you need to understand is the heart blocks imagine Imagine if I, uh, the atrial ventricular block, uh, one, one more thing what you need to understand, in the ECG, all of you know what is P wave, what is P wave, the first positive wave is a P wave, the first positive wave is a P wave, the first negative wave is a Q, the next positive wave is the R, the next negative wave is the S, the next positive wave is T. The P wave, P wave is due to what? Atricular depolarization. When the electricity passes from SA node to the AV node, 
Yeah, it was going from S in the AV node. Okay, that's a that's when it will get depolarized. When it will get depolarized, what happens to it? Yeah, it contracts. Yeah, it will contracts when it will get depolarized. Then QRS complex. What is that QRS complex? Electricity going from AV node to the ventricular there. That's a QRS complex. That's a ventricular depolarization. Yeah, when the ventricular depolarizes, again, ventricular gets contracted. Then what is the T wave? Ventricular repolarization. When the what happens to the ventricular when they get repolarized? It dilates. Okay. What happened to the atrial repolarization? Where is that wave? It's hidden. It's hidden in the QRS complex. So it's not visible. Okay. Now, why this are positive wave? Why the P QRS is positive? Why? Because if the impulse is going from the SA node towards the left side like that, if the impulse is going towards this way, then all the waves will be positive. If the impulse is going in the opposite direction, then the waves will be negative. The, if you heard of junction or rhythm, junction, what do you mean junction? Atrial ventricular junction. If the impulse is produced in the junction and going opposite direction, what do you think will happen to the, the P wave there? It gets, it becomes negative. Do you understand that? Okay, so sometimes you can get a negative P wave because of junctional rhythm. Okay, so but normally we know electricity goes in that direction. That's why it's a positive wave. Okay, so now, other thing what you need to understand is, is a atrioventricular node, AV node, so what is the function of the AV node? Is to delay, is delay the conduction, is to delay the conduction. That means not all the impulses which are put in the SA node reach the ventricle. Now which part, which part of the ECG represents AV conduction? AV conduction, which part of the ECG? PR interval. PR interval actually represents the atrioventricular conduction. Okay, AV conduction. And what is PR interval? Beginning of the P to the beginning of the QRS, that is PR interval. Are you understood? Okay. So now, if the AV conduction is gets delayed, if the AV conduction gets delayed, what do you think happen to the PR interval? It will be prolonged. Okay. The AV interval becomes prolonged. It will become like this. Okay, the A B interval, the, that's the beginning of the P, beginning of the P here, the, the P R interval gets prolonged. So, but, okay, what? so the, uh, you should know what should be the normal P R interval. What is the normal P R interval? Three to five small boxes. Okay, the normal P R interval should be about between three to five small boxes. Five small boxes, how many large boxes? One large box. That means the PR interval normally should be one large box within one large box. If the PR interval is more than one large box, that is prolonged. Have you understood? If the PR interval is more than one large box, that's more than five small box, that is a prolonged PR interval. And if the PR interval is prolonged, what do you call that? What do you call that? First degree hard block. So if the PR interval is prolonged, that is first degree hard block. That means where is the first degree hard block? Where is the first degree hard block? Is in the AV node. The yeah, problem is the AV node. That's a prolonged delay. Prolonged delay. So that means more impulse will not reach in the ventricle. What happens to the heart rate then? Will be bradycardia. All of you understood? There will be bradycardia. There will be much slower because not all the impulses are going down. So there will be bradycardia. That's the first degree hard blocks. The prolonged PR interval. Now imagine, imagine if I cut cut this bundle of his, if I cut this wire bundle of his, what do you think will happen? Can the electricity go from AT into the ventricle at all? No. no. So what should happen? Ventricle will not contract, the patient has to die. But God has given a, uh, the safety mechanism, what happens? The ventricle will start beating on its own. Means the ventricle will start generating its own impulse. 
and then ventricular will start contracting on its own. That's called ventricular rhythm. Okay. So if the ventricle has to generate its own impulse, that will be much slower than the SA node. What did I say the rate of SA node? 100 to 120. If the ventricle has to generate its own impulse, it will be between 40 to 60 impulse per minute. 40 to 60 impulse per minute. That's called ventricular rhythm. So if the if I cut the bundle of his, that means no electricity going down. What do you call that? What do you call that if you cut that? What is that, what is that block? Complete. Complete block. That's called as complete block or what is the other name? Third degree hard block. So all of you know where is the third degree hard block now? Is in the bundle of his. If the bundle of his get damaged, no electricity going from it into the ventricular hole. That's a third degree hard block, complete hard block, very, very dangerous. But as a safety mechanism, the ventricle starts generating its own impulse, but impulse will be very slow. What is the rate? What did I say? What is the rate? 40 to 60 only. That means there will be bradycardia. If the ventricle is beating on its own, there will be bradycardia. So, how does the ECG look like if the ventricle beating on its own, generating its own impulse? How? There is a no relation. Between P and Q. If I am asking about the ventricular waves, which is the ventricular wave? QRS. The normal QRS, the width of the QRS, normal QRS width. Okay, the QRS width normally. Normally, how much it should be? Normally, it should be less than three small squares. Okay, the normal width of the QRS complex should be less than three small squares. What should the normal width? Less than three small squares. If the ventricle has to beat on its own, what will happen to the QRS? Will become wide. And the QRS become wide. Okay? So QRS will become very wide. If the ventricle has to beat on its own, the QRS will be wide or is otherwise called as a broad complex. The broad QRS, broad QRS complex. Now I gave you one reason where you get a broad QRS complex. Tell me where you get a broad QRS complex? Ventricular rhythm. Ventricular Yes. Ventricular rhythm with the ventricle beating on its own. Okay. So normally, the normally the ECG is when you say that the narrow complex, narrow QRS complex, narrow QRS complex is normal to have. Okay. No narrow QRS is normal. What is the narrow QRS means? Less than three small. That's normal. But it's more than that. That's called broad. That is not normal. So broad QRS complex is not normal, narrow QRS complex is normal. So that means if the atria, normally the ventricle is beating because of the atria, atria is controlling the ventricle. If the atria is controlling the ventricle, if the atria is controlling the ventricle, QRS will be narrow. But the atria cannot control the ventricle, then QRS will be broad. Are you understood? Because if the, the bundle of his is damaged the air the impulses from SA node, SA node in the atria. If the, the atria cannot control the ventricle, so that means the ventricle beat on so that will ventricle rhythm that's broad. So that means if the QRS is narrow, what does that mean? The, yeah, it is supraventricular. Okay, the atria is still control the ventricle. All of you understood? If the QRS is narrow, is the atria still controlling the ventricle? Yes. But if the if it becomes broad, that means atria is not controlling the ventricle. Ventricle is on its own. Are you understood? Yeah. So what is the other name for the third degree heart block? Complete. Other name what is the complete heart block? What is the other name? Ventricle. Complete atrial ventricular dissociation. Okay, there is no association between atria and the ventricle. There is a complete atrial ventricular dissociation. Which is more dangerous? First degree heart block or third degree heart block? Third degree. Third degree. Yeah, you, you understood why? Okay, so so that means in heart blocks, in heart blocks, first degree or second degree or third degree, what will be the heart rate? Will it be tachycardia or bradycardia? Bradycardia. In heart blocks, there will be bradycardia. That means if somebody's heart rate is slow, what is the first thing you will be looking at? Heart blocks. If this is a bradycardia, the first thing you will be looking at is there any hard blocks, first degree or second degree or third degree. 
second degree I have not told yet, which I will we'll discuss later. But at least all of you know where is the first degree block? Heteroventricular node. Where is the third degree block? One of is. Okay, which is you know more dangerous. Now imagine, imagine the bundle of is fine, but if I cut, if I cut the right bundle branch, if I cut the right bundle, if I cut that wire, what do you think will happen? Will the impulses reach the right side ventricle? No. Only the left side ventricle electricity going, but on the right side, there's no impulses coming on the right side. What do you call this? Right bundle branch block. Right bundle branch block. That means the right side heart does not work. If the right side heart does not work, can he survive? No. Both the ventricle has to be working for a person to survive. So how will the right ventricle work then? Again, there's a safety mechanism. What is the safety mechanism? The electricity going to the left one, that is still working. So it's good. the impulses reach of the ventricle, the ventricle wall. Then through the wall, through the wall, electricity reaches the right side. Then the right side ventricle gets depolarized. All of you understood? So that means there's a delay. The right side ventricle gets depolarized late. So there's a delay in the conduction. So it has to go to the left side first, then left of the side wall has to get depolarized, then the electricity comes to the right side, or the right side wall to get depolarized. So what do you think happened in the chaos complex then? Will become, if there's a delay, what happens? Broad. Can you see that? The QRS becomes broad. QRS is very low. Right now. So now I gave you two reasons for the broad QRS complex. Tell me the first reason which I told you. Complete hard blocks. Okay, so we're completely aware the ventricle is beating on its own. What's the second reason? Bundle branch block, which is either right or left. Same way. Right or left bundle branch block. So there'll be broad cures complex. Two reasons I told you where you get a broad cures complex. Now, if you remember the circulation, circulation, I told you the right could not, there's, there's no named branches, but left has got two named branches. Why the left side got two more blood supply because left side heart is more bulkier left side heart is more bulkier it means more blood supply that's why there are two branches similarly here also the no supply conduction also right side there's only one branch right bundle branch right right bundle is only one branch whereas the left bundle has got two branches what are the two branches of the left bundle left anterior fascicle and post fascicle that two fascicle yeah? so it's not showing in this picture there's one branch supply the anterior side another one the posterior side they've got two branches so anterior fascicle and the posterior fascicle okay so left side has got two fascicle left anterior fascicle and a posterior fascicle because the left side the heart is more bulkier okay so so far if you're following yes Excuse me, sir. Yes. Where is the second degree heart block present? That we will discuss later when we go through that. At the moment, I am trying to make you understand the anatomy of it. So when you go through the each one, we will come to that point later, okay? Okay, sir. Thank yes. you. Yes. So now, what I want you to do, familiarize with the notes that I gave you, so that you know you will know what is where, okay? So far, you all of you understood? Now, there's a two types of ECG which I told you to a lead and a rhythm state. So you need to know for which pathology you'll be looking at to a lead and which pathology you'll be looking at the rhythm state. So, rhythm state, first page is all about rhythm state. Okay? So now you tell me, what are the things you'll be looking at the rhythm state? Rate, the rhythm axis, axis is not written there. Rate, rhythm axis. So that means when you start looking at the ECG, you'll be looking at the rhythm state, which is uh, not here now. So that's the rhythm strip which you know, taken uh, from the two. So if you want to calculate the rate, rhythm and axis deviation, you'll be looking at the rhythm strip. And what else? The hard blocks, hard blocks. You'll be looking at the rhythm strip, first degree, second degree, third degree. You'll be looking at the rhythm strip. And also arrhythmias, arrhythmias, atrial arrhythmia, ventricular arrhythmia. You'll be looking at the rhythm strip. Okay? And also the QT interval, QT interval, you'll be looking at the rhythm strip. 
So the second page, next page, next page. So what do you, what do you use a tool in DCG for? What do you use a tool in DCG for? If you want to look at the bundle branch block, right to bundle or left to bundle branch block, you must look at the tool in DCG. Or if you want to look for a scheme or infarction, you should look at the tool in DCG. Or if you want to look for pericarditis, tool in DCG or the hypertrophy, right or left ventricle hypertrophy, you should look at that tool in DCG. Or if you can remember now, so if you want to look for a bundle branch block, where do you look for? Tool in DCG. Or if you want to look for pericarditis, tool in DCG. If you want for ischemia infarction, tool in DCG. Or if you want to look for hypertrophy, tool in DCG. Okay. Uh, yes, T waves also usually we look at the tool in DCG. So the first thing to understand which is uh, you look for which one. Now, if the patient has chest pain, patient presents the chest pain, we'll be looking at the tool in DCG or rhythm strip. Arrhythmia, if there's arrhythmia, what may be the symptom? What are the symptoms of arrhythmia? Palpitation, shortness in the breath, dizziness because less blood flow into the brain, dizziness, and what is the, the maximum can happen? Loss of consciousness, collapse. Okay? So these are symptoms of arrhythmias or heart block. Again, there will be bradycardia. Again, less blood flow into the brain. So that means if somebody presented with the shortness of breath or palpitation or loss of consciousness, which you'll, which is you will be looking at? Rhythm, Rhythm state. But if it's a patient with chest pain, what is the problem? Is either ischemia or infarction or pericarditis. You'll be looking at twelve ECG. So with the symptom wise itself, you can know which you which ECG you should be looking for. Okay, as I told you, if there's a chest pain, problem is either ischemia or infarction or pericarditis. You'll be looking at the tool ECG, but if there's a palpitations or uh, the syncope, uh, uh, shortness of breath, because if the heart is beating very fast, patient will be short of breath too. You'll be looking at the rhythm stick. Okay? Now, if you see, this ECG shows to a leader as well as rhythm stick. Now, first thing what you need to look for in the ECG is, is to calculate the rate. What's the rate, heart rate? But to calculate the heart rate, first you should know the rhythm. Because we have a formula to calculate the heart rate. We have a formula to calculate the heart rate. And how do you calculate the heart rate? This is very important for the black 2 also. Calculate the heart rate is very important for the 2, we know. There's a station where you have to treat the nurse. Okay, there are some of the things which is very, very important you have to tell the nurse. Okay? So she will ask you, doctor, how will you calculate the heart rate? Tell her that first we need to check the rhythm for the heart rate. Whether we need to check whether the rhythm is regular or irregular. How do you check whether it's regular or irregular? The, the paper method, yeah? Paper method. Take a pen and a paper. Take a pen and a paper and take a rhythm sip. Take a rhythm. Not actually rhythm sip. Okay, all the rhythm sip, uh, any of the lead two or uh, whichever. So that's the rhythm sip. Mark the RVs, at least three RVs. Mark RVs, that's one RV, next RV, next RV. Okay, so at least three RV, then you move it somewhere else. Okay, let me just check the regular one first. Okay, let me show this one. Okay, so mark the three RVs, that's one here, one there, one there. Then you move it somewhere else. Now, if the markings do correspond to the other RVs there, that means the rhythm is regular. Are the marks corresponding there? Yes. It's corresponding everywhere. That means it is regular. So, rhythm is regular. So, whereas this one, this one, if you see the mark, there's one RV, one, one RV, but if you move around, here, there is no RV here. There's one RV here, the next there's no RV. So, that is irregular. So that's the irregular rhythm. So now we have a formula. If the rhythm is regular, how to calculate the heart rate? Heart rate is 300 divided by number of large boxes between the two R waves. Okay, this is the plug two can use. You must know this because the nurse will ask you how to calculate the rate. So there's a formula. If the rhythm is regular, that's a heart rate will be 300 divided by the number of large boxes between the two R waves. 
That means if there are four large boxes between the two armies, what is the heart rate? 10 divided by 4 will be 75. Now, if the rhythm is irregular, irregular, you can't use that method. Why? So, let me calculate here. Okay, tell me, what is the heart rate here? What is the heart rate? This is the RV. This is the RV, yeah? How many large boxes between the two RVs? Three boxes. Three boxes. What is the heart rate? 100. Okay, so because that's regular, everywhere it's the same. But the problem here, here, between the, between these two RVs, how many large boxes? Is it two, boxes? two. But between these two RVs, how many large boxes? Four. Four. So can you use a formula? No. You cannot. So that's why you have to use some other formula. So what is the formula if it is irregular? Heart rate is equal to number of RVs in 30 large boxes. That you multiply by 10. For example, you, this is irregular, yeah? Irregular. How to calculate the heart rate here? You, you first you count 30 large boxes. You're starting from here if you want. 30 large boxes, yeah? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, up to 30. Imagine up to 30. Then see how many R waves are there. You yeah, calculate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so what is the heart rate then? 100. 100. Yeah. The number of R waves in 30 large boxes you multiply by 10. That gives the heart rate. All of you understood? Okay. So that's how we calculate the heart rate, which is very important for the plug too, because the nurse will ask you how to calculate. Looking at the ECG. But normally, do we have to calculate the heart rate looking in the ECG? No. How do you know the heart rate? By the mind. Okay, so. Now, if, if there are three large boxes between the two RIVs, heart rate is 100. If there are uh, the four large boxes between the two RIVs, 75. Uh, yeah, so let me put it other way around. If there are four large boxes, then the heart rate is 75. If there are five large boxes, if the five large boxes, heart rate will be 60. Six, anything less than 60 is bradycardia, anything more than 100 is tachycardia, right? The normal heart rate is between 60 to 100. So that means if the heart rate has to be normal, how many large boxes should be there between the two R waves? Around 4. In and around 4. Do you understand? Between 3 and, three and 5. Between 3 and 5, the, between 3 and 5, the, the, if the uh, uh, so many large boxes are between the two RVs, that means heart rate is normal. Okay, so now look at here. Is it regular or irregular? Regular or irregular? Rhythm. You look at it, you will know. Regular or irregular? Regular. How do you calculate the heart rate? 300 divided by large boxes. Yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 large boxes. So 300 divided by 7, what is the heart rate? Around 35, around 38, whatever it is. So that's body card. But again, you don't really have to call. You look at the ECG, you will know what it is. What do you think is normal heart rate, body card, or body card? That is body card. Look at it, you will know. Okay. So what do you think that is? Body card. You look at it, you will know. Okay. What do you think that is? Oh. Well, hundred, three large books, hundred, which yeah, can borderline, yeah, body card or normal. Okay. So, all of you know how to calculate the heart rate and the rhythm. Okay. Okay, what it is what is sinus bradycardia? What is bradycardia? 60 or less than 60. What is sinus? Sinus means normal. When do you say it is a normal bradycardia? If, if all the waves are present and if they are normal, if all the main waves, main waves are present and if they are normal, the only problem is the heart rate is slow, that is sinus bradycardia. Are you understood? Which are the main waves? P waves, P waves, yeah, there are P waves, but here there is the same patient, P waves are there, okay, there are P waves. P waves are there, QRS is there, T waves there, all the three main waves. P, Q, R, S, T. All the three waves are present and they are normal. 
So that's sinus. Uh, because the heart rate is very slow, it is bradycardia, sinus bradycardia. So who has sinus bradycardia? At least. At least. At least and and when? When else you get? Yeah, sleeping, yeah? When you're sleeping, most of you are uh, having a bradycardia now. <laughs> so, do you, should you treat sinus bradycardia? Normally we don't need to treat unless it is causing a problem. If it's causing a problem, then only you have to treat bradycardia. If you have to treat the sinus bradycardia, what is the, what is the treatment? What is the treatment of any bradycardia? Atrophy. Atrophy. But if it is causing serious problem, then pace it. Then pace it. Okay. Otherwise, you can give just medication. If it is causing serious problem, then the pace. Sinus tachycardia. What do you mean sinus tachycardia? Tachycardia means fast, hundred or more. Why you call sinus? All, all the three waves are present and they are normal. What are the three waves? P, Q, R, S, T. P, Q, R, S, T. That is sinus tachycardia. The only problem with the heart rate is very fast, but all the three waves are present. Okay, P, Q, R, S, T. P, Q, R, S, T. Remember that these are very very important to understand. You should know how to differentiate between a sinus tachycardia and SVT, which we'll discuss later. Okay, so you should know how to differentiate. So sinus tachycardia, if you understood. Now, when do you get sinus tachycardia? When do you get sinus tachycardia? When? A lot of times, if you, if you run, exercise, the fever, pain, anxiousness. Okay, when in the PLAB exam. <laughs> So should you treat? Not necessary unless you're causing a problem. So if you have to give either beta blockers or calcium channel blockers. And if you have to treat. Okay, so one more thing too, what we normally look for is the rate, rhythm and axis deviation. All of you know about axis deviation? Uh, it is important uh, uh, to know because of the, you know, if there's a block again, Bifascicular block, tifascicular block, you need to understand the axis, is an axis deviation. There is something called as a right axis deviation and the left axis deviation. How to find out right axis or left axis deviation. So, if, if you know that's a heart, that's a right atrium, right, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. And where is the SA node? Is here. That's the SA node there. And I told you impulses go from SC node to the AV node, then like that, okay? So impulse is normally going in that direction, okay? So normally impulses goes in that, that's a normal axis, that's a normal axis. All of you can see that? Yes. Now, if you, when you record ECG, 12 lead ECG, we place the electrode wire. All of you remember the wires? Okay, so now, where do we place uh, uh, it, the chest leads, all of you remember the chest leads? We place a V1. Where is the V1? The fourth intercostal space, right side of the sternum. Fourth in the right side of the sternum. V2, same same space, fourth in the left side of the sternum. And forget V3, the one V4. V4 is the apex, which is mid trichlor line. Or the apex, mid trichlor line. And V5, same, same horizontal line, same horizontal line with the anti axial line. And V6 will be. Same horizontal line, but mid axial line. Okay, that's how we place. Here, yeah, V1, V2. Uh, let me just draw that. So, V1 will be somewhere here, V2 will be somewhere there, V4 will be near the apex, V3 will be between the two, V5 will be lateral to that, V6 even lateral to that. Okay, the whole chest leads. Limb leads where we collect all the, the leads to the arms and one leg. Okay. So in the that's lead one, lead two, lead three, and AVR, AVL, AVS. Okay, they are the limb leads, you know. Again, what you need to understand is in the limb lead one, in limb lead one, electricity flows from right to left like this. Can you see that arrow? In limb lead one, that's the limb lead one. Okay, limb lead one, electricity goes from right towards the left. Whereas limb lead two, limb lead two, like this. Okay, right. The electricity goes from right towards the left leg, towards that. Can you see that? So that's the limb lead 2 here. That's the lead 2. And limb lead 3, electricity goes from left towards the right. Left towards the right. 
and AVF is from head towards the leg and this is AVL yeah, this is going up towards the right and AVL towards the left. All of you can remember that? So one, remember one and two. <laughs> At least one and two. Where is the one? Where is the one? Yes. Left side. Left side. Two, down. down. Okay, just remember this way. That's the lead one, this is the lead two. Okay, so normal axis is in between the two. Can you see that? The normal axis between the two. Electricity is going this way. Okay, now if the electricity is going this direction, what do you call that? Going towards left, yeah, my left. Left axis deviation. If the electricity is going this way, this is the right axis deviation. Easy to remember? Okay, so if the electricity is going that direction, that's left axis deviation. If you're coming towards this direction, right axis deviation. Okay. So how to find out that right or left axis deviation? Very simple. Uh, look at ECG in lead one and lead two. Yeah, all of you remember that lead one and lead two here. That's the lead one and lead two in the two lead ECG. All of you remember that here yeah, two lead ECG. Lead one and lead two. Lead one and lead two. Okay. Uh, I told you whichever direction the electricity is going, that will be positive. Okay, where are the, the whichever direction electricity that will be positive. Can you see the, the lead one? This is the lead one, yeah? QRS, R, R is going in that direction. Positive. Yes, yeah, that's a more positive. Yeah. Okay, this is going towards the lead one, lead one that side, left side. And lead two, lead two. Positive. Positive. Okay, so if the QRS is positive in both, yes. if the QRS is positive in both, it's where is the electricity going? It's left. Between the two. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, no. Left. Electricity yeah. going towards, yeah. imagine the electricity going towards in the middle of one and two. So it will be positive towards the one and positive towards two also. Yeah. It's in between. Yeah. It's positive towards one, positive towards lead two, both. That means if the QRS is positive in both, that means axis is normal. Understood? It's going in between. <coughs> now, if the electricity is going this direction, towards the left, left. what will thing happen? Left axis deviation. Left axis deviation. What do you think the, 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 the way will be? Okay. Bigger on the one and smaller towards two. Do you understand? It will be taller towards the one and the shorter towards the lead two because it's going towards the lead one yes. if it is swinging this way what happens we have to be taller towards two but shorter towards one are you finished with that okay if you just swing the hand like this if you swing the hand like this which is which is taller Left side is taller, that's the lead one is taller, yeah. and lead two is shorter. shorter. If it's coming like this, yeah, lead two is longer, short, taller, and lead one will be shorter. Okay, so if you see here, this is prominent, yeah, the positive. Lead one is positive. Yeah, it is going towards the lead one, left side. And if you lead two, can you see the, yes. the QRS is shorter? Yes. It's more negative, can you see? Yes. More negative, predominantly negative, lead two. Predominant is negative. That means which side of the electricity is going? Left side or right side? Yes. Left side. That is left axis deviation. Okay? If the opposite happens, what does that mean? So if you see the the in the lead one is predominantly negative. negative. But lead two is predominantly positive. So lead two, predominantly positive. That means it is right axis deviation. Is it understood? Yes. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, you repeat the last two points because uh, there's a lot of noise for the online people. Okay, as I told you, normally that's a left. Left is a lead one, and the right is lead two. Can you see the picture here? That's a lead one and lead two. Lead one is left. Lead two is right. Normally, electricity goes in between. The normally the electricity goes in between. If it is going in between both the lead one and lead two, the QRS will be positive. 
both will be positive. But if that is going more towards the left, if you're going more towards the left, that the cures will be more positive in lead one, and less positive means more negative towards lead two. Okay? But if it is coming towards the lead two like this, towards the right, that's the right axis, then the lead two, the cure will be taller, and the lead one will be shorter. Okay? Online doctor, can you please switch off your mind? Online doctor, switch off your mind. Okay, sir. Uh, as I told you, if it is predominantly positive both the sides, yeah, Q has predominantly positive, Q has predominantly positive lead one and two. So it is normal axis is going in between. But here, if you see, is predominantly positive lead one, but this is predominantly negative in lead two. That means electricity going towards lead one, towards the left, it's left axis deviation. Okay, so again here in the in the lead one is predominantly negative. If you see the going towards the negative, but predominantly positive lead two. That means electricity going towards the lead two, to the right side. So right axis deviation. So now you can easily tell me where do you get left axis deviation, where do you get right axis deviation. In which condition is your left axis deviation? Right, okay, right hand hypertrophy or left hand hypertrophy or right bundle branch block. It is right bundle branch. It is not going towards that side. It is mainly going towards the left left side. So if there's a left bundle branch block, which side is the is going first? Right, right side. All of you understood? Yes. So, so again, all right ventricular hypertrophy. And right ventricular hypertrophy also will be like that. Left hand right will be going that side. Are you understood? Yes. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Yes. A very short question, actually. Uh, you said that the axis for uh, for the axis we only look at the rhythm strip and not at the twelve lead ECG. But then here we are. I did not say the axis. Uh, I didn't say axis. I did not say axis. I said only rate rhythm. Okay, then my bad. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so now. Uh, one more thing you need to understand, this is mainly for uh, the blockage, bifascicular, trifascicular block. Okay, I told you if you remember, the left bundle branch has got two fascicles. Which are the two fascicles? Anterior and posterior fascicle. If there is an anterior fascicle block, anterior fascicle block, there will be left axis deviation. If there is a posterior, keep your hand right way. Posterior block will be right axis deviation. All of you can remember that? If you want to, it's not necessary, okay? That's why I'm not just, uh, uh, if you want to, you can remember. If you keep the hand like that, that's an anterior fascicle, posterior fascicle, of the left branch. If there's a blockage here, it'll be left axis deviation. If there's a blockage in the posterior, it'll be right axis deviation. Okay, so leave that part. Now, let's go to the QRS. P, I already told you why you get a P wave. Uh, the, in the plot exam, the nurse will ask you, what is the P wave? P wave, I already told you, what is the P wave? It represents ventricular depolarization. Normally, it is positive. Atrial depolarized, yes. Okay, so. Now, imagine this is a heart. Imagine this is a heart. There's a right atrium and left atrium. If there's a right atrial enlargement, right atrial enlargement, right atrial gets enlarged, what do you think happened on the P wave? Yeah? If the sine atrial is there. So the P wave will be tall. Tall and picked. If the right atrial gets enlarged, T wave, the P wave will be tall and the peak. All of you understood? So, but if the left atrium gets enlarged, left atrium gets enlarged, what do you think happen? The impulse are produced here, then it has to go to the left side. Yeah, that takes time. What happens, what do you think will happen to the P wave? It will become wide and like a hump. It's on the right side of the atrium, that's the left atrium waves. All of you understand? So it's called a bifid P wave. Bifid P wave. All of you remember? So where do you get the peaked P wave? Peaked P wave, tall P wave. Right atrial enlargement and where do you get the bifid P wave? Left atrial enlargement. Okay, so that's the problem in the P wave. And 
where he get absent B wave, absent, atrial fibrillation, atrial fibrillation, absent B wave, and also sometimes SVT, SVT also you can get absent B wave. Tell me the two conditions we get absent B waves, atrial fibrillation definitely absent, and sometimes in SVT, then we get absent B wave. So three problems I told in the B waves. Yes, there's atrial enlargement. Uh, right and right atrial enlargement and absent periods. Then the QRS, so the PR interval, which I already told you, what's the normal PR interval? From where to where is the PR interval? Remember the game? Beginning, remember the word, begin the P to the beginning of QRS. What should be normal between 3 to 5 small squares, 3 to 5 small squares, normally. Okay, so where do you get a prolonged PR interval? Where do you get prolonged PR interval? First degree heart block, which I told you. And the PR interval can be short also, it can be short also. Where do you get a short PR interval? WPW syndrome, we'll show that later. Then the QRS duration we already discussed, ST segment, ST segment we'll discuss later, TBA we'll discuss later. Okay, now let's go to arrhythmias, arrhythmias. Let's go to atrial arrhythmias first, atrial arrhythmias. There are four arrhythmias in atrial, which are the four arrhythmias? Atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation, and SVT, and the WPW syndrome. These are four arrhythmias. Okay. So first is atrial flutter. Why do you say atrial? Why do you say this is atrial? Why this is not ventricular? Online doctor, somebody's mic is on. Switch off your mic, please. Switch off your mic. Okay. Why do you say this is atrial? Because the, the, because the QRS is narrow. If the QRS is narrow, we say atrial. So the problem is in the atrial end. Atrial. atrial flutter, flutter. That means there are too many P waves are produced. Too many atrial impulses are produced. Understood? Too many P waves are produced. That's atrial flutter. It doesn't go to the Okay, so, ventricle. but not all the impulses go to the ventricle. Not all the impulses go to the ventricle. That means ventricular rate is not that, many incre uh, that much increased. Okay, if all the impulse goes to the ventricle, then the ventricle has to be very fast. So then the, the patient can die. But luckily not all the impulse goes to the ventricle, but still there could be taking guard. There could be taking because some impulse will be going down. So atrial flutter. How do you know this atrial flutter? Saw tooth appearance, yeah. Some people they didn't know what is saw tooth. There's the teeth of a saw, that's how it looks like. If you see saw tooth appearance, multiple P waves. So that means, is the P wave present in atrial flutter? Is it present? Yes. Yes, P wave is present in atrial flutter. Yes. Okay, so and remember the problem is in the atria. The problem is in the atria, too many impulses are produced, but not in the AC node. Yeah, is outside the AC node. Impulse are produced outside the AC node, not in the AC node. But too many impulses are produced. That's atrial flutter. The another important way, which you have to, uh, what is this? What do you see there? Where do you look for atrial flutter? Rhythm ship or two lead? Rhythm ship. Okay, look at the rhythm ship. Two lead two. What do you see there? What do you see there? So to the appearance. That is atrial flutter. That's atrial flutter, yeah? Okay, so another important thing in the hospital you will see almost every day is atrial fibrillation. Very, very common. Why do you say this is atrial? Why do you say atrial? Narrow QRS. QRS is narrow. And fibrillation, fibrillation means irregular. So rhythms are coming irregular. Can you see the distance between these two yeah. and that two? So that is irregular rhythm. And do you see the P waves? No P waves. There are some P waves, but it's invisible. P waves are invisible. We have two main impulses are produced. Can you see the, where the impulse are produced? In the atria. Impulse are produced in the atria, but there are two main impulses are produced in the atria. Okay, that's why because of two main impulses, it is not even visible. There are so many impulses are produced. Okay, so now tell me the three characteristic features of atrial fibrillation. Atria, why is this atrial? Narrow QRS and irregular rhythm and absent P wave. So that is the atrial fibrillation. What is this? What is this? Look at the rhythm ship. Look at the rhythm ship. The minute you look at it, you should know what it is. Atrial fibrillation, yeah? Why? Can you see? Irregular rhythm. Okay, irregular rhythm. 
Now remember, atrial flutter, atrial flutter can be regular, can be irregular. Whereas atrial fibrillation is always irregular. irregular. They can never be regular. Atrial fibrillation is always irregular. Whereas the atrial flutter can be regular or irregular. All of you heard what I said? Yes. yes. Okay, what is the top one? What is the bottom one? Only look at only the rhythm, see. What is atrial flutter? And this one? Fibrillation. All of you can make out the difference? Yes. That's still, that's a very short, that's a very wide there, just still. That's the irregular rhythm. Okay, cause of atrial fibrillation. A lot of conditions can cause atrial fibrillation, COPD, chronic heart failure, heart disease, uh, pericarditis, myocardial infarction, thyroid, alcohol, lot of things. Treatment, what's the treatment of atrial fibrillation? What's the problem with atrial fibrillation? It is beating very fast. If the atrium is beating very fast, there is no time for the atrium to contract properly. If the atrium does not contract properly, the, there is no blood flow into the, the ventricle. So that there is a stasis of the blood, so there will be, blood will become thick and clogged. If there is blood clot formation in the heart, what will happen? Go to the, the brain, it can cause stroke, it can go to the leg, cause a kidney ischemia, it can cause missing intercarteries, cause missing infarctions. Okay, so the problem is the atrial flutter as well as atrial fibrillation, both the same problems. Treatment, how do you treat atrial fibrillation? The two things, the rhythm, treat the rhythm and treat the rate, rate and the rhythm, okay? So how do you treat and prevent coagulation? So beta blockers mainly and anticoagulants, that's the atrial fibrillation treatment. So what is this? Supraventricular tachycardia. Why do you say, why do you say supraventricular? Because above the ventricle, surprise above the ventricle. Because the QRS is? Now. now, okay, so that means that it is still control, it is still control of the ventricle, okay. So, and why this is not uh, sinus tachycardia? Absentee. Because the PVS are absent, is not visible. All of you understood? Yeah. So, what is this way in between? T. There's a T, QRS, T, QRS. The PVS are not visible. How do you make the PV visible? You have to slow the heart rate. If you slow down the heart rate, then the PVS will be visible, okay. So this is SVT, supraventricular tachycardia. Okay, so because all the, there's, uh, why is supraventricular, I told you, QRS is narrow and is very fast, but one more important feature, what is this? This is regular. SVT is always regular. S is always regular, atrial fibrillation is always regular, whereas atrial flutter is, can be regular or irregular. So that is SVT, yeah, what is this? What is this? Is it SVT or sinus tachycardia? Now, if you see, there are three waves here, P, Q, R, S, T, P, Q, R, S, T, P, Q, R, S, T. Yeah, now, you might say this is sinus tachycardia, but though the waves are there, can you see this wave, the T wave, did not come down to the baseline. It has not yet reached the baseline. There is no time for it to reach. So, immediately the next wave started. That is S, V, T. If the, the T wave did not reach the baseline, did not reach the baseline, that is not sinus tachycardia, that is SVT, okay? So for the PLAV1, that is very, very important, the, EC, the GMC put that ECG. People got confused between SVT and the sinus tachycardia. The T wave, if they did not reach the baseline, that is not sinus tachycardia, that is SVT. Okay, treatment for SVT, all of you know? What's the treatment? What, how do they present SVT? Uh, S, how do they present? Shorten the breath and palpitation. Shorten the breath, palpitation, what's the treatment? First statement so is whether they are stable or unstable. If they are stable, you have time to do the vagal manuals or the cantrid massage, vagal manuals, you have time or you can give adenosine, IV. But if the patient is unstable, unstable, cardioversion. You have synchronized cardioversion. So what is this? What is this ECG? Look at the rhythm strip here, yeah? that's a two lead. Look at the rhythm strip. This is more of a negative wave, means R, S is uh, deeper, okay? R is very short here. That's R, can you see the small R? Then the S wave, small R, S wave. But you can imagine that those are R waves. So now we say, what is it? In? Is it narrow or broad? Yeah. Yeah. Narrow. narrow. So it is narrow. So is uh, supraventricular or ventricular? Ventricular. Supraventricular ventricular? No, ventricular. Supraventricular, I told you. If it's narrow, it is supraventricular, not ventricular. Okay, supraventricular and the narrow case is the regular, regular? Yeah. 
Regular. Is it tachycardia, normal or bradycardia? Tachycardia. Can you see? Only two large boxes between the two RVs. Only two large between the two RVs. So there's a tachycardia. Heart rate is about 150. So narrow complex, regular, narrow complex, regular tachycardia. What is that? SVT. So that's the SVT. All of you can remember that? That's the SVT. So what is the top one? What is the bottom one? What is this one? This is sinus tachy. Can you see? The T wave, there are three waves are there, but the T wave has come and reached the base, baseline. Where this line, then this one, the T wave has not reached the baseline. That is SVT. This is sinus tachy. What is this one? What is this one? What is this one? We already saw that. What is that? SVT. What is this? Narrow complex. Are the P waves present? Q is present. T present. P, Q, S, T. All the three waves present. They are visible. What? Three, only three large boxes. 100. Heart rate is 100. Take So this is sinus tachycardia. Okay, science take your idea. Love you understood? So, I'm so sorry, the the only difference between SVT and Sinusaki is that the T waves doesn't reach the baseline in case of SVT, that's right? SVT, sometimes the P waves are not visible at all. There are no P waves sometimes. But if it is visible, the QRST, the T waves and the P, they are not, they are joined together, they are not separated. Okay, so, where is this? Can you see the, these T waves, P waves, they are not connected to each other in normal sinus rhythm. Yeah. But here it is connected, yes. still connected. That is the SVT. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, so uh, we already discussed that. Sinus talkie. What is the top one or the bottom one? What is the bottom one? Fast, fast. Only one second you have. That is the atrial population. Can you see? Irregular. What is this one? What is that one? Is it narrow complex or the broad complex? No. Narrow complex. So it is above the ventricle. Yeah, supraventricular. So there is narrow complex. And P waves, are they present or absent? Absent. P waves are absent. So is it tachycardia, bradycardia, normal? Tachycardia. You look at it, you will know. It's tachycardia. Then definitely there is a tachycardia. If there is a tachycardia, it is either sinus tachy or sinus tachy or the SVT or atrial fibrillation. So is it sinus tachy? This is sinus tachy. No. No. Views no. are absent. So this is either atrial fibrillation or SVT. How do you differentiate atrial fibrillation and, and SVT? Atrial fibrillation is always irregular. SVT is always regular. So which one? Is it regular or irregular? Irregular. Is irregular. So this is atrial fibrillation. No, this is SVT. Why? Because yeah. If you look at the ECG for a long time, then only you'll see the irregularity. If you just close your eyes, if you look at only one second, does it look regular or irregular? It looks regular. Do you understand? Whenever there's a confusion, is it regular, regular, irregular, irregular, that means it's regular. Why? Because when you breathe in and out, sometimes heart rate changes. Okay, when you breathe in and out, heart rate changes. So this is as it is not atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation, you will never get confused. Can you see that? There's no confusion at all in atrial fibrillation. If there's a confusion, that is SVT. SVT. All of you understood? What is that? If you're confused, regular, 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 irregular, that is SVT. It's, because it's, in atrial fibrillation, they will never get confused because it's very clear irregularity. The reason for that one is only the breathing. Only it looks irregular if yeah. you look long. Can you see this bit broad, a bit yeah. shorter? Yeah. But that's because of breathing, breathing oh, right. in and out. Okay, the, the last one for the atrial, uh, the thing is WP, W syndrome, is it? Is it a dental problem? Yes or no? Yes. Can you miss this in the hospital? Yes. If you miss it, you lost your job. Why? Very dangerous. WP, W syndrome, all if you know that, it has got an extra pathway here. Normally, there's only one pathway from AV node downwards, there's only one pathway, which you know that. Yeah, the the bundle of his and bundle branch block. Normally, there's only one pathway. But in it, uh, the WP, W syndrome, there's a double pathway. There's a double pathway. Okay, there's an accessory pathway. There's one more pathway. So, if there's a double pathway, what happens? So, the impulses from AV node comes to the ventricle quickly, very quickly can reach because it's a double pathway. So, if the, if the impulses reach very quickly to the ventricle, what happens to the PR interval? 
short. We are entitled to be very short. We are entitled to become very short. And also because the impulse is going very fast to the, the ventricle, there's a delta wave. Can you see? Yes. Like a delta wave. The impulse is reaching very fast. The PR interval is short and there's a delta wave. Okay? And also, what happens, there's a re-entry tachycardia. Because normally, what happens, impulses from the AV node goes to the bundle phase, right and left bundle right. right. Then it, the ventricular wall gets depolarized. Ventricular wall gets depolarized, then the impulse dies there. Impulse will die. Finished. But here in WP, you know what happens, impulse going down to the right or left and right branch, it depolarizes the ventricular wall that comes back into the atria. Because there is one more pathway, through the one more pathway. Comes back to the atria, goes back to the ventricle, comes back. That means there is a re-entry tachycardia. That means what is the heart rate in the WP, WP syndrome? Fast. We are taking cardia. Okay? So, all of you understood WP, WP syndrome? What are the things you will get in the ACG? Short PR interval and delta wave. Short PR interval, delta wave and tachycardia. So that means uh, the impulse goes to, from the ventricle to the... From the edge of the ventricle very fast. Very fast. Okay. As you can see that, uh, all enter to switch off your mind. Can you see? Delta wave there. Yeah. Short PR into delta wave. Okay, so you are not supposed to miss it. Because I told you that it can cause sudden death in young people. It can cause sudden death. What will be the symptom? Symptom will be of tachycardia. If the heart is beating very fast, what happens? There will be palpitation, the less blood will go into the brain, so there will be dizziness, light headedness, there could be short in the breath, okay, or fainting. Young people present these symptoms, you need to think of uh, the WPW syndrome. Treatment? Treatment again depends on whether the patient is uh, stable or unstable. If the patient is stable, you have time. If the patient is stable, you have time. That's vehicle maneuvers or drugs like amidron or radiofrequency catheter ablation or surgery. That's if the patient is stable, but if the patient is not stable, then only cardioversion, synchronized cardioversion. Okay? Now we finished all the atrial arrhythmias, then the ventricular arrhythmias. Ventricular arrhythmias. Which are the ventricular arrhythmias? Three important, four important actually. Ventricular fibrillation, ventricular, tachycardia, asystole and pulseless electrical activity, okay? So, what is this? What is this wave? Ventricular. Is it broad complex or the not a complex? Broad. Broad. It's very broad and irregular. Vibration means irregular. Bizarre, irregular complexes. Okay, that's ventricular fibrillation. Broad complex, bizarre, irregular complex. That's ventricular fibrillation. How will be the patient? How will be the patient? Will you be talking? Can you be talking? Now, ventricular fibrillation means ventricular is beating very fast. It is beating very fast. There is no time for the ventricle to contract properly. It's just beating like that. That means the blood is not going out of the ventricle. So that means there is no cardiac output. If there is no cardiac output, patient will be unconscious. He is almost a dead man. Almost a dead man. He is in cardiac arrest. So ventricular fibrillation means cardiac arrest. So he is in cardiac arrest. Can you see all the, the impulses are produced in the ventricle? Impulse produced in the ventricle. So that's why here, yeah, the ventricular is broad complex. I told you. If the, the impulse produced in the ventricle, it will be broad complex. I told you before. So that's a broad complex. Bizarre. Fibrillation means bizarre. Irregular. So this is a cardiac arrest. What's the treatment? Ventricular fibrillation. What's the treatment? First, first thing. What's the first thing? First, CPR. First, you do CPR. Okay, sometimes the CPR he can recover. But then, of course, is a shock. You have to give a shock. So that is ventricular fibrillation, ventricular fibrillation, all of that. Ventricular fibrillation. What is that? This is a, a atrial flutter. Is it atrial flutter? What do we? If there's a, 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 a P wave, then where are the cures? There's no cures. It's not. So it's actually cures wave. That means this is, that is, ventricular fibrillation. So that's cardiac arrest. Yeah. So next one is ventricular tachycardia. Why do you say this is ventricular? Because it's regular. It's wide. Because it's wide. Curious is wide. That's why it's a ventricular. Yeah. Why do you say tachycardia? Fast. Fast. What are the other features here? It's regular. 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 So regular, regular, broad complex tachycardia. That is ventricular tachycardia. Mm -hmm. All of you understood? Mm -hmm. It's 
It's broad complex, that's why it's a ventricular, it's because of, it is fast, because tachycardia, and it is regular. Yeah. If it is irregular, what is that? If it is irregular? Ventricular yeah. fibrillation. Yeah. If it is irre irregular, it is fibrillation. Because this is regular, this is tachycardia. Okay, that's the only difference. How will it be the patient? Is it cardiac arrest? No. It may or may not be. Because there are two types of ventricular tachycardia. What are the two types? Pulse less tachycardia and with the pulse. Means sometimes the patient may have a pulse, sometimes the patient may not have a pulse. If the patient does not have a pulse, that means cardiac arrest. All of you understood? Ventricular tachycardia, if there is no pulse, means it is cardiac arrest. If the patient have, may have a pulse also. So that means, if you see this ECG, what is the first thing you look for? Patient is conscious or unconscious. If the patient is conscious, what does that mean? Patient has pulse or not? Patient has pulse. If the patient is unconscious, what does that mean? No pulse. No pulse. So, if the patient has a pulse, what to do? If the patient has a pulse. So, if the patient does not have a pulse, let's talk of that first. If the patient does not have a pulse, CPR. that is cardiac arrest. Your CPR and shock. shock. CPR shock. If the patient has no pulse, that means the cardiac arrest, that is CPR and shock. Okay? And if the patient has a pulse, will you do CPR? No. No. What do you do? Then again, depends on the patient is stable or unstable. If the patient is stable, you have time. You have time to give medication. I'm your daughter. If the patient is unstable, no time to give the medication. Shock. Are you finished? Synchronized shock. So, so far I gave you two conditions where is the cardiac arrest. Which are two conditions of cardiac arrest? So far? We attack and we fail. What is this? What is this? We attack. Yeah. We attack, you look at it, you know what it is. You don't have to keep thinking. Yeah, we attack. Oh, we attack. What is this? And what is this? What is this? We attack. What is this? This ventricular tiger. This is? Supra ventricular tiger. What is, the, what is the difference? Not this is broad complex, that is not a complex. Both are regular, both are regular, but this is not a complex, that is broad complex. What is this? Ventricular tachycardia, that's a special form of ventricular tachycardia. What is this? CD points. Yes? It looks regular, regular, but what happens is if you hold the spring. Uh, if you hold this ventricular tachycardia, if you hold it on two sides, if you twist it, that's how it looks like. Can you see that? Yeah. If you hold the two sides and twist it, that's how it looks like. Okay, so that is torsi the point. Is it dangerous? Yes. It can turn into, it can have cardiac arrest. It can happen, cardiac arrest can happen any minute. It is a torsi the point. Again, you are not supposed to miss this. Then, Last, the other important one is, what is this? Yes, it's still no waves at all. How will it be the patient? Dead. Dead, well, not dead, it's a cardiac arrest. Okay, cardiac arrest. So, imagine the patient sitting and news, reading a newspaper and you see that on the ECG monitor. What are you telling? Oh, you have a cardiac arrest, come and lie down, you have to do CPR. Check his leads. Maybe the leads have come out. Maybe the leads are not connected. Maybe the ECG machine is not connected to him. First, the current is heat properly. Okay, then you look at it. So, if this is the real asystole, that means the patient will be unconscious. This is cardiac arrest again. What do you do? What do you do? CPR. CPR and? Shock. shock? No, CPR. Only CPR. Why no shock? No shock. No shock. No shock. Why no shock? Because there is no rhythm. Yeah. To, why do you give a shock? Imagine this is a ventricular tachycardia, pulseless VT. Why do you give a shock? Or ventricular fibrillation, imagine there's a ventricular fibrillation. So Why do you shock? Because shock means it's like you're hitting on that. Just hitting on that. When you hit on that, they become normal. Do you understand? That's what you're doing. So for that to become normal, there should be some waves at least. You know that? In it, there's no waves at all for it to become normal. So even if you hit it, they can't become normal. So that means you can give shock for the, you can give shock for the, Ventricular fibrillation or ventricular tachycardia, but there is no point in giving a shock to that. Yes, it's still. Are you understood? So that means which cardiac arrest is better? Cardiac arrest due to ventricular fibrillation and ventricular tachycardia is better, or the cardiac arrest due to ventricular uh, asystole is better? None of them. None of them. 
<laughs> but this is the worst because just if you can't give a shot, a, he is not going to survive. Most likely he is dead. Yeah, just pray. So you pray. Yeah. That means what are the treatment for this? CPR and pray. <laughs> Okay, so the other one, what is the other rhythm for the, the same ventricular, pulseless electrical activity. Pulseless electrical activity means you have a normal ECG, you have a normal ECG, but there is no pulse. Means it's still a cardiac arrest. All of you understood? ECG is there, the rhythms are there, but your patient has no pulse, no cardiac arrest, uh, no cardiac output. That's a cardiac arrest again. So, so far we got the four rhythms. Which are the four rhythms? Your ventricular rhythms? Fibrillation, tachycardia, asystole, and pulseless electrical activity. So we finished all the arrhythmias. Now the brain, uh, the boundary branch block. I already told you right and the left boundary branch block. How do you look for the right and left branch block in on the ECG? On the ECG. So what do you need to look for the M pattern? M pattern. Can you see there's an M pattern? QRS looks like an M. M pattern. Okay. You must look for M pattern. If the M pattern is on the right side, as the right bundle branch block, if the M pattern is on the left side, as the left bundle branch block. So what you need to look for are the two LED CD. V1, V2, V3, they are all on the right side. Can you see? V1, V2, V3. That's the right side. V4, V5, V6 on the left side. Understand? Remember, this is the right side heart. V1, V2, V3. V4, V5, V6 is the left side of the heart. So if you see a v, uh, M pattern in the right side of the heart, that is right bundle branch block. block. If you see M pattern on the left side, that's a left bundle branch block. block. Easy? Yeah. So what do you see that? Right. Do you see an M pattern anywhere? Yeah. Right. Yes, right. where? Right. right side. Can you see? V2 is very clear. V1 also there. V3 is there. Okay. Remember up to here. Up to here is a V1. Up to here is a V2. Up to here is a V3. Is that V4 is from there. Do you see any M pattern there? No. V4, V5, V6, no M pattern. So this M pattern is on the right side, V1, V2, V3. That's the right bundle branch block. And what is that? What is this? Can you see M pattern there? Left. left. That is V5. So this is left bundle branch block. Which is more dangerous, right or left? Left. left. Right bundle branch, branch block, sometimes they are normal also. but. In which dangerous condition you can get the right bundle branch block? Pulmonary embolism. Okay, in pulmonary embolism you can get the right bundle branch block. Left bundle, yeah, I told you right bundle branch block sometimes can be normal. Whereas left bundle branch block is never normal. There's always an organic problem. And uh, which dangerous condition you can get the left bundle branch block? Which dangerous condition? MI. Okay, you can get left bundle branch block in MI. That means if you look, if you see a left bundle branch block, what is the most important thing you need to think of? MI. Okay, whether it's got chest pain, if there's a chest pain, if you see a left bundle branch block, what is the, what is the next thing you want to look for? If there's a left bundle branch block? Yeah, sometimes you can't see ST elevation if there's a left bundle branch block. First you see the ODCG. If the ODCG also shows this left bundle branch block, probably it's an old finding. But if there's a no uh, the left bundle block in the recent old ECG, recent old ECG, probably there's a new left bundle block, bundle branch block, probably there's an MI. That is if the patient has symptoms. Okay? So at least all of you know how to look for right and left bundle branch blocks. Then the hypertrophy, right and left hypertrophy. Uh, so how do you look for right and left hypertrophy? S in V1 and R in A5, if it's more than 7 large squares, okay, S in V1, R in A5, if it's more than 7 large squares, that is bundle branch, sorry, that is a hypertrophy. Okay, so, uh, what you need to look, if, can you see that, this side is a V4, V5, V6, that's the left side I told you. If the R V is very tall, R V is very tall on the left side, that's a left ventricle hypertrophy. If the R is a very tall on the right side, that's a right ventricle right hypertrophy. But what you need to calculate is that you have to calculate how much tall it is. One large way, two large way, you know, you need to calculate that the, the total S and the total R, the total if you combine uh, one, uh, this side and that side, that should be more than seven large squares. I'm not going to detail because not that important. But what you need to look for, if the two ECGs, can you see? 
half per and lower ACG, they are touching each other, usually this is hypertrophy. All of you understood? Normally they will not be touching each other. It will be like this. Can you see? They are not touching. If they are touching each other, most likely this is hypertrophy. So then you know which side it is, yeah? Because that side is touching, that's a left ventricular hypertrophy. If this side is touching, this is right ventricular hypertrophy. Okay, so then the other most important anyways, MI. How to look for MI? So what you need to look for is the ST elevation, which all of you know. Imagine the P, Q, R, S, T. So what you need to look for ST elevation. In MI, what you get ST elevation, whereas ischemia, what you get ST depression. So that's the ST segment. I'm writing in red color. That's the ST segment. That's the ST segment. What you need to look for the ST segment is on the baseline, above the baseline, or below the baseline. So that means you should know where is the baseline. Where is the baseline? You draw an imagine line. Draw an imagine line over the PR interval. There's a PR interval. Begin the uh, P to the beginning QR. That's a PR interval. Then extend that line. Extend that line. That is a baseline. So then you look for where is the ST segment. If it's uh, so, for example, if you see an ECG looks like this. So, that is the baseline. You draw an image line there. That's the baseline. And that's the ST segment there. That's the ST elevation. Or if you see an ECG which looks like this. Depression. Okay, so that's the baseline there. So this ST segment there. That's the ST. Depression. depression. That is ischemia. That is infarction. So again, whenever there's an is infarction, ischemia, you need to look at which wall. Which wall there's ischemia or infarction. Which all of you know how to look for it? Yes. So if you look at this. Yeah, this is V1, V2, V3, where is it? V, V4 is missing. Uh, that's V3, V4, V5, and V6 there. Imagine. So, if there's a uh, inferior wall infarction, which lead will be? Inferior wall. Can you see the inferior wall here? Three. Two, three, and avia. Two, three, avia. That's the inferior wall infarction. Yeah. Anterior wall infarction. V1, V2, V3, V4. V3, V4. They're anterior wall. V1, V2, V3, there are anterior wall infarction. V5, V6, there are left lateral wall and one end AVL. There are also lateral. There is one end AVL, there are upper lateral. V5, V6, there are lower lateral. So V5, V6, one end AVL, there are lateral walls. Okay, so two, three AVF, there are inferior wall infarction. V1, V2, V3, V4, there is an anterior wall infarction. V5, V6, one end AVL, there is a lateral wall infarction. Okay, so. Which one of the posterior wall? Which leads looks at the posterior wall? Behind the first. The section. same one, same leads which looks at the anterior wall. V1, V2, V3, V4. They also look at the posterior wall of the heart. Okay? Which all of you know that? Again, when you look in the ECG. Okay. So when you look for the MI, you have to look at the, which wall. So you need to look at the each different walls for MI. So two, three, A, V, F. Which wall is this? Inferior, inferior wall. That's the inferior wall. Two, three, F, inferior wall. And which is the anterior wall? One, one, two, V1, V2, V3, and V4. V4. That's the anterior wall and also posterior. Anterior posterior. And V5, V6, that is? Lower lateral and one and AVL, that is upper lateral. Okay, upper lateral. All of you understood that? Okay, so now what you're looking for is any ST elevation or ST depression in these walls. So look it now, two, three AVF, is there any ST elevation or depression? Is there any ST elevation depression? Do you see anything? No. What is here? Depression. ST depression. ST depression. depression. So so far, what's the diagnosis? Inferior wall ischemia. So far, it's inferior wall ischemia. Then look at this. Yeah, is there an escalation depression here? Anterior wall? No. No. What about here? 
There is a stimulation. There is a stimulation. Yes. Okay. So that is very clear cut stimulation. Yeah. So anterior wall infarction. Anterior wall infarction. Yeah. Stimulation. Anterior wall infarction. Plus skin. Then lateral wall. If you see, there is a stimulation, but there is no stimulation here. Remember to say MI. There should be minimum two leads. There should be a stimulation. Minimum two leads. There is only one lead stimulation. Though that's not lateral wall. And also here. Here, can you see the stillation in one and yes. avial? One and avial also there is a stillation. Yes. So there is a lateral here, upper lateral, there is a stillation, both the leads. Low lateral, no. So what is the diagnosis here? Antero lateral infarction. Antero lateral infarction. But there is a ischemia going on in the left atrial wall. So when there is an infarction going on in one wall, there could be ischemia going on in other wall. What do you call that? Reciprocal changes. Okay, reciprocal changes. With this infarction going on in the one wall, there could be ischemia going on in the other wall. That is called as reciprocal changes. So if there is infarction and ischemia going on at the same time, what do you, which condition do we treat? Only infarction. We ignore the ischemia, treat only infarction. That means what is the main diagnosis here? Anterolateral infarction. Okay, this is not very clear, but you can still read that. That's one, two, three, AVR, AVL, AVF here, yeah? So that's a two, three, AVF is here. Two, three, AVF is here. What do you see there? Right. ST elevation, ST elevation, ST elevation. Two, three, AVF, that's ST elevation. What's the diagnosis so far? Yeah. Inferior infarction. There's no ST, there's ST depression here, ST depression here, ST depression here also. Okay, so there's no stimulation there. One and AV also ST depression. One and AV also ST depression. So that means what's happening in the anterior and lateral wall? Ischemia. There's ischemia going in the anterior wall and the lateral wall. But infarction going on in the inferior wall. So what are the diagnosis there? Inferior wall infarction with the reciprocal changes in the antero lateral wall. So diagnosis there, again two, two here, no ST elevation depression, there is ST depression here, ST depression here, the three and here there is ST depression, there is ST elevation, ST elevation, ST elevation, and also there is ST elevation here, one and AVL, there is ST elevation. So antero, lateral, uh, with the several changes in the inferior wall. Okay, so again, two, three AVF. Anything wrong? Yes. It looks like a ST elevation here, not actually a ST elevation because the whole case is going up. The quality is not good. So that means just consider there's no ST elevation in two, three AVF. Okay, it looks like that, but it's not actually because the whole case is going up like that. So there's no ST elevation in two, three AVF. No ST elevation or depression in two, three AVF. But then you see here, what is here? Depression. ST depression, ST depression. So, uh, there's other way, there's nothing, no ST elevation, depression 1 and AV also, there's no, there's like ST depression here. No. Not very clear. Okay, that means, what's the diagnosis here? Anterior wall, ischemia. ST depression means anterior wall, ischemia. But the problem is, what is the, what else you see there? Tall RV. Can you see the RV is very tall in V1 compared to the RV is in V2 and V3. This is not anterior ischemia. This is actually posterior wall infarction. Because if there is an anterior ischemia, you will see only ST depression. You will see only ST depression, but there will not be any tall RV in V1. If there is a tall RV in V1, that is a posterior wall infarction because normally you should know how that normally how does it look like. So if you see here in V1, RV is RV in V1 is very short, then it becomes taller, taller, as it goes in you know, V1 it becomes taller. Can you see here? RV in V1 is usually very short, very short, normally. It's very short. 
But as it goes laterally, that's V1 and V2, V3, it becomes taller, taller and taller. That means in the normal ECG, in the normal ECG, RV in V1 should be shorter compared to the RV in V1, uh, V2 and V3. If the RV is very tall in V1 compared to the RV is in V2, V3 and ST depression there, that is posterior wall infarction. All of you understood? So if you look here, there is ST depression in V1, V2. If there is ST depression, this should have been anterior ischemia. But if because here the RV is very tall in V1 compared to the RV in V2 and V3, this is posterior wall infarction. Okay, all of you understood? Yes. <laughs> we finished all the infarction now. Okay, what is this? One in one second. Antero, lateral infarction, yeah? Okay, okay, what is this? Very important for the plaque 1, plaque 2, both. Okay, 2, 3, AVF, anything wrong? 2, 3, AVF? There's the elevation, can you see that? Yeah. ST elevation, but no ST elevation here, no ST elevation, no depression there. But what do you see here? ST elevation, ST elevation, ST elevation, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, uh, one AVL, everywhere ST elevation. So this is antero lateral infarction, but inferior wall is the infarction. So every wall is infarction. Can it happen? I already told you, the blood supply is different. So it does not happen like that. That means this is not infarction, this is pericarditis. All of you understood? Because in infarction, all the walls cannot have infarction at the same time. Because what you need to remember is ST elevation, you can also say in pericarditis. But there is not a clear shape. It looks shaped. But it's not clear. Only uh, one and two, you can say. Okay, so if there's a if there's an infarction, it has to be according to the walls. Not all the walls can have infarction going on at the same time. If the if there's a ST elevation in all the walls, then it is not infarction. That is pericarditis. In pericarditis, I told you there'll be a global ST elevation, except area. Don't ever look at the area; you'll get confused. Don't look at the area. But you may get ST elevation other leads. But here, inferior wall. You, you don't see 3 and AVF here in this EC, but again, lead to this ST elevation. How can there be ST elevation here? There should be steep depressions here. Do you understand? There would have been a reciprocal changes if this is an MI. But instead, you see ST elevation. It can't be uh, MI. This has to be pericarditis. So, what's the other difference? What you see in the ST elevation? You must look at the ST elevation shape in MI and pericarditis. So both are ST elevation, both you see ST elevation. So in that one, that's a convexity upwards, can you see? Conic, that is MI, that's MI, whereas here, concavity upwards. Concavity upwards, that is pericarditis, that is pericarditis. So what I told you before is, if, if, yeah, if we can sit, if we can sit on that, like a saddle, a horse, on the sitting on the horse, a saddle, if we can sit on that, that is pericarditis, because in the MI you cannot sit. If you sit there, what will happen? You will fall. <laughs> okay, MI you can't sit on MI. You can, you can sit on pericarditis, but you cannot sit on MI. So that's a start shape. If you can see like a hook coming up and going down like that. Coming up and then going down. That's what you see here. If you, yeah, if you can see properly, can you see here? Going up and coming like this. Okay, so like a hook. So that is pericarditis. So saddle shaped. Okay, so that means you can get the ST elevation in MI as well as pericarditis. In pericarditis, what you don't see anywhere? What is ST? Depression. You will not see ST depression anywhere. Whereas in MI, you can see ST elevation somewhere and ST depression somewhere else. But in pericarditis, you do not see ST depression anywhere. What you see is only ST elevation everywhere. So we finish that. T wave. Very good, tall T wave. Hyperglemia. T wave, can you see? 
40 wins. That is hyperkalemia. Dangerous or not dangerous? Last dangerous. Okay. Okay, well, the last part remaining for today. Very important is heart blocks. Break. I'll finish in 15 20 minutes. Yeah, just 15 minutes I'll finish. Then you can go home. Okay, so hard blocks are uh, because only hard blocks are left. Okay, so first degree, second degree, and third degree hard blocks. Now, how to look for hard blocks? When you start looking for hard blocks, I told you, body card. Usually there will be body card, not necessarily, but if there is a body card, most likely there is hard blocks. There are uh, three types, first degree, second degree, and third degree. Now, if there is a QRS is missing anywhere, if the QRS is missing anywhere, that will be second degree. Second degree. Are we heard? Yes. Because in first degree and third degree, QRS complex will never be missing anywhere. If you see QRS missing anywhere, there can be only one type of hard block, which is second degree. Are you understood? Okay. In the first degree hard block, in the first degree hard block, which I already told you, what do you see? Prolonged. We are. Interval. interval. Yeah, the PR interval will be prolonged. When you say PR interval is prolonged? If it is more than one large box. Okay, being the PVA to the beginning of the if it is more than one large box, that's prolonged PR interval. Okay, so what you see the prolonged PR interval, only abnormality, the only abnormality in the first degree hard block is prolonged PR interval. What you did not see in the first degree hard block? What you don't see in the first degree hard block, which I told you, you see only in second degree is QRS. So QRS will never be missing in the first degree hard block. And also the, the duration, PR interval, is constant everywhere. Means the duration is prolonged here, is long, is prolonged, into the same distance everywhere. Okay, that's a constant. PR interval is constant everywhere. All of you understood? We are also prolonged and constant everywhere. That is first degree hard block, no other abnormality. Where second degree, there will be QRS missing. If the QRS missing, that is second degree hard block, nothing else. And in the third degree, the QRS is not missing. QRS is not missing. But there, there may be PR, the PR interval, PR interval, that is not constant everywhere. Okay, so there somewhere the PR interval this much distance, somewhere it's only this much, somewhere this much distance. That means PR interval is not constant. That means what is the difference between the first degree and the third degree? In the first degree, PR interval is constant. Third degree, PR interval is not constant. All of you, easy to understand? Okay. Will the chaos be missing in the third degree? No. no. If you look here, what is here? What is here? That's the beginning of the P, the beginning of the QRS. Is the PR interval prolonged? Yes. It is here, two large boxes there. That's prolonged. And here also two large boxes, there also two large boxes, there also two large boxes, everywhere two large boxes. Can you see that? That means constant. It's everywhere it is constant. What do you think? First degree, second degree, third degree? This is first degree. Is the QRS missing anywhere? No. Look at the shortest distance between the two RV. Shortest distance. Yeah? That's the shortest. If you see here, same distance, then yeah, if, if this is the QRS, the next QRS is here. If you move the hand, the next QRS should be there and it is there. The next QRS should be there and it is there. Next QRS should be there and it is there. That means QRS is not missing. All if you understood? QRS is not missing. The PR interval prolonged, but is the same distance everywhere. So that's the first degree hard block. Look at the rhythm ship. Where do you look for hard block? It will lead on to a rhythm ship. Rhythm ship. Okay. What do you see there? P waves are here, right? That's the QRS. So that's the beginning of P, beginning of QRS. Is it more than one large box? Yes, that's a prolonged PR interval. Again, 
Is the distance same or different? Same distance everywhere. Can you see? We have interval is prolonged and same everywhere. Is the QRS? Look at it. This is the QRS. Yeah. The next QRS should have been there. It's there. Next QRS should have been there. It's there. Next QRS should have been there. It's there. It's not missing anywhere. So what is this? First degree hard block. All of you can easily make out. Yes. The second degree hard block. Second degree, what did I say? You will see? Missing curse. Missing curse. There's a two types. Type 1, type 1 and type 2. Type 1, type 2. Second degree, type 1 and type 2. So how do you know type 1 and type 2? In type 1, in type 1, we are interval is? We are interval is? Uh, yes, it can be progressive, is that, uh, one, one second, that, that I know it is progressive, but uh, easy thing to remember is in type 2, in type 2, PR interval is constant, PR is constant, here PR interval is not constant, in type 1, okay, remember that, that's easy to remember. In second degree, type 2 PR interval is, is constant everywhere, the same duration. Whereas in type 1 PR interval is not constant. And why do you say second degree? Why do you say second degree? QRS is missing somewhere. If the QRS is missing somewhere, if the QRS is missing somewhere, PR interval constant everywhere. What is that? Type 2. Type 2. Second degree, type 2. All of you know? Yeah, QR is missing somewhere. QR is missing somewhere. And the PR interval is not constant. That is type 1. All of you know? Okay. If you see here, PR interval prolonged and C. Okay, can you see? Are they same distance? No, they are not same distance. They are not constant. So this is type 1. Here, can you see? And also, why do you say second degree? Yeah, this is like one curse here, next curse is there. Next curse should have been there. Can you see? Yeah. Missing. Okay, so here also. Curse, curse, the next curse should have been there. It's missing. So that's why both are second degree. But here the PR interval is not constant. That's a type one. But here the PR interval is constant. So this is type two. Or if you understood. So what is the is it a hard block? Is it a hard block? Yes. Yes. Why do you say that? Why do you say that? Can you see that? Look at this. This is the shortest what you see here. Yeah? The shortest between the two curves. The next one should have been there. Is it there? No. Not there. The next one is there, but the next one should have been there. Not there. Next one is there, but the next one is not there. So QRS is missing. So is it a hard block? Yes. Which type? Yes. Second degree. So this is a second degree. Now you need to see whether type 1 or type 2. So if you see the PR interval here, there's a PR interval. There's a PR interval. Now look at this PR interval. This PR interval and that PR interval here. Do you think that's the same duration? No. So it's a different duration. So it is type 1. So second degree, type 1. Easy? Same thing. Okay. Look at this. This is the rhythm shift. That's the rhythm shift. So what's happening here? This is QRS. That's QRS. Yeah? Now, next QRS should have been there. Is it there? Not there. Next QRS should have been here. Not there. Here it is there. Here it is there. Here it is there. But this one is missing. So what is that? Second degree. Second degree. Now in you see was type 1 or type 2. So look at here the PR, the P wave is inverted, P wave is inverted, that's the distance, PR and row, that's the distance, and that's the distance, that's the distance, that's the PR and row, can you see? Are they, what is this? I2, constant, yeah? There's a constant everywhere. So that's a type 2. Which is more dangerous, type 1, type 2? 
Yeah, the more that it is, more the number it is more dangerous. Type 1 is not that dangerous, type 2 is more dangerous, type 3 is even more dangerous. Okay, so now, if you look at here, uh, the QS complex, this is the distance, right? Imagine that's the distance from here. And the next one it is there. Next one is there, next one is there. Is the QS missing anywhere? No. no. Is the second degree? No. 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 Can it be first degree? Can we uh, say I said the, can if the cure is missing can it be first degree or third degree? No. So if the cure is not missing, if this hard block it has to be first degree or third degree. You understand? If the cure is not missing, if this hard block it is either first degree or third degree. So if it is going to be hard block, this will be either first degree or third degree. Now let's see is there a hard block. Okay? Can you see that this is a P wave? That's a QRS, right? If this is a P wave as a QRS. Is there a PR interval prolonged? Yes. 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 That is prolonged PR interval. Now if you look at the next one, if you see here, can you see that? Is the same distance? No. 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 What is this? 30. 30. 30. Are you finished? Yes. So if it is the same distance, then the first degree, if it's not the PR interval is not the same, that is? 30. Okay? So if you see here, what do you think this one is? What do you think after the QRS? P. Okay, the next P is here, the next P is here, next P is there. Why is it like that? Actually, the P waves are coming regularly. That's the P wave, next P wave is here, the next P wave is there, the next P wave is there, the next P wave is there, the next P wave is there. Remember, they are coming regularly. And the QRS is also coming regularly. That's one, the next one here, next one here, next one here, next one here. They are also coming regularly. The P wave is coming regularly, QRS is coming regularly. But they are not associated with each other. There's a complete dissociation. So that means the P waves can come anywhere. It can come even before the QRS, it can come after the QRS. Sometimes it's buried inside the QRS, sometimes hitting on the T. It can be anywhere. Okay? Why does it happen? Why? There is a complete block. Complete block. But when there's a complete block, what happens? Right? So what did I say? It the ventricle has to beat on its own. The atrium is beating on its own, ventricle is beating on its own. When the atrium is beating, is it faster than the ventricle? Yes. 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 So that means you will see more P waves. They are coming regularly, but it is more in number. The QRS is, the ventricle start beating on its own, but it is beating slower than the atrium. So that's why you will see, though it is coming regularly, it is all here and there. So that is a third degree heart block. Okay, so very very dangerous. What is the danger? Severe bradycardia, what can happen? You can have cardiac arrest any minute. What do you do? What do you do? Pacemaker, call the senior pacemaker. Okay, look at the rhythm stick. Look at the rhythm stick. Is it not block? Why? That's a P wave, that's a QRS, right? So, that's a P wave, that is a QRS. Is there any PR under prolonged PR interval? Yes. Definitely there's a heart block. Yes. Okay, definitely there's a heart block. So now, is it second degree? No. No, because QRS, next QRS is, next QRS is there, next QRS is there. So QRS is not missing anywhere. So not second degree. This is either first degree or third degree. So, is, so now this is the PR, next one, where is the next one? Can you see? Can you see that's a PR interval? So, all you already know what it is. What is that? Third degree. Third degree. Are you okay? Yeah. Bye. All right, so now I just need another 10 minutes, 5 minutes maybe, just to show how to read ECG. Now you know how, how the ECG looks like around different pathology. But when you have ECG, because you have so many things in your mind, you need, unless you have proper order, to draw the abnormality, you can't. So you need to have a proper order so that you don't miss anything. How would you read the ECG? Go in the same way. Okay? So, for example, let's see something. First, you look at the ECG. I already told you what the first thing you look for. Identity, date, time, and amplitude, speed, the quality. So imagine those are all there. Then you look for the waves. Do you have important waves present or not? Which are the important waves? P, Q, QRS, and T. So look at the rhythm step first, okay? Look at the rhythm steps. 
Do you have the ways there? The P way, Q R S is there, T ways are there. Okay, that are there. So to the rhythm sheet. Now, so what do you want to look for now? Where do you start reading the ECG? I told you rate, rhythm, axis and all that, right? So if you want to calculate the rate, what do you want to do? What do you want the first thing you want to check? Rhythm. You want to check the rhythm first. What is the rhythm? Regular. So regular. So what is the formula? 300 divided by number of large boxes between the two arrays. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So again, what is the heart rate? Around 40s. So what, are the, what do you think? Body cardia. What is coming to your mind already? Maybe block. Maybe heart blocks. Okay. So now uh, we have done the rate. We have done the rhythm. What is next? Axis. For that, what do you look at? One and two. What is what do you see here? What do you think the axis is? Normal axis. How do you know? Both are positive. Both are positive. So the normal axis. Okay. So now coming to what, what else? Now look for uh, P waves. Where are P waves? Is it uh, peaked P wave? Is there right atrial enlargement? No. Left atrial enlargement? No. By feet? No. Okay, P waves are okay. Now PR interval. PR interval. Rhythm shift. Rhythm shift. PR interval. Prolong. What's coming in your mind already? Hard block. Hard blocks. Yeah, there is hard block. What is the first thing you look for? Which is the easiest? Which hard block is easiest to look for? Second degree. Check is the second degree there? No. No. Is the curious missing anywhere? No. So this will be either first or third. Okay, what do you think? First or third? Third. 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 Because there's a QRS, uh, that's a PR interval, that's a PR interval. There's a long, that's a short. So there's a 30 hard box. Are you going to stop reading the ECG? No. You have to read the whole thing. Okay, just because you saw one abnormality doesn't mean there's no other abnormality. <laughs> okay, sir. Then what do you look for? You look for the hard blocks, then the arrhythmias. Atrial arrhythmia, ventricular arrhythmia. Which are the atrial arrhythmia? Atrial flutter. Is there atrial flutter? Is there atrial fibrillation? No. Is there any SVT? This is bradycardia. This is not tachycardia. Okay. Is there any WPW syndrome? No. Okay. So now comes the ventricular fibrillation. Uh, ventricular arrhythmias. Is it a ventricular uh, fibrillation? Is there ventricular tachycardia? Is there an asystole? Is it a pulseless electrical activity? How do you know that? You have to check that patient. I told you that can be easy, can be normal, but you need to check the patient. That we don't know. Okay, now the cute interval I did not teach is not that important for your level, but it is important. Uh, if, if the cute interval is prolonged, what can happen? It can cause torsity points. Cute interval, okay? Q, Q to T. Where is the Q? Q is the here. It's not very clear. To T. Okay, you need, if that is prolonged, then it is, uh, uh, it can cause, uh, what did I say? Tosity point. How do you know what should the QT interval? QT interval is normally will be written in the ECG itself. Okay, normally written, it's about 540 something. Okay, so I do not see what is normal QT interval. Is there anyone written? Yes. Males, it should be 440, females, it should be 460. Danger if it is more than 500 milliseconds. Okay or 2.5 squares. If it is more than 2.5 large squares, uh, then it is dangerous. Okay? If, if the Q to end of, from Q to T, end of T, Q to end of T, it is, if it is more than 2 large squares, that is a prolonged Q to interval. If there is a prolonged Q to interval, that can lead into torsity point, which can lead into cardiac arrest. That's what you need to look for. But I told you the cute interval will be written on the ECG paper. The, the, the machine itself calculates the cute interval. It will be there. Okay? How many seconds it will be there? Okay, so we finish the rhythm sheet. Then you look at the 2 LED ECG. What are the things you look at the 2 LED ECG? First, you look for the bundle branch block. Is there a bundle branch block? Right bundle branch block? No. Is there any M pattern here? No. Is there an M pattern there? No. No right bundle branch block? No left bundle branch block. What is the next thing you look for? Ischemia. Ischemic infarction. That is you are looking according to the walls. Is there any inferior 2, 3 AVF? Is there any ST elevation depression here? No. There. 2, 3 AVF. No ST elevation, no depression. And the entry wall, V1, V2, V3, V4. Is there any ST elevation depression? No. no. Lateral wall, V5, V6. 
one and AVL. No. No ischemia, no infarction. Any pericarditis? No pericarditis. Tall, any tall T waves? No. No. Any ventricular hypertrophy? No. No. So, what is this? Third degree, heart loss. All of you okay? Yes. So, all of you know how to read a CG? Yes. You make a habit of it, how to go through that. So if you have this, the, I can only advise you keep this. Uh, when you start working in the hospital, if you go through that, then you will not miss. So for all, of, okay, let me just finish our five minutes. Are there any questions? Let me see whether you understood. Easy questions? 30 year old, yeah. We have about 14 questions, we need to finish in two minutes, yeah? If you get two minutes in two minutes, you will understand ACG. Third, third year old lady, present this is a palpitation. Are we looking for a 2 lead ECG or a rhythm shape? Rhythm shape. So they, they had a following ECG finding. What's the most likely diagnosis? Straight away. Supraventricular tachycardia. All of you know that? Why do you say that? Because the QRS is narrow and the QRS is narrow and there's a tachycardia and Q and T, they are touching each other. Otherwise it would have been, if they are not touching each other, that would have been Sinus taking guard. Because they are touching each other, it's SVT. Next question, 62 year old gentleman, person is still feeling faint. What are you looking for? To a leader, a rhythm sleep. Rhythm sleep again. He had a falling ECG for finding. What's the most likely diagnosis? <coughs> Air fibrillation. Why do you say that? Here is the narrow and irregular rhythm and absent PA. So that is atrial fibrillation. Okay, question number three, 55 of my general members in the palpitation short of the breath. Atrial water. Okay, next one. <laughs> I don't need to put the question. What do you think the patient will be? Cardiac arrest, yeah, unconscious. Atrial, uh, sorry, ventricular fibrillation. Question number five. 87 year old lady diagnosed collapse, lady collapse in any. &E. Was found by the following ECG finding. What is this? Broad QRS. Can you see? Broad QRS and regular, regular. Regular. So this has to be? Waiting. Okay, so the 6, 50 CL man present the ECG 3 days. Yeah, after MI. What is the complication after MI? Complete arrhythmias. Okay, so which is arrhythmia? Waiting. Next one. Okay, question number 7. Question number 7. 28 year old man present the rapid bonding in the chest is completely conscious throughout the arrhythmias. Following is he was taken. What is the first medication used? Adenosine. Why? SVT. SVT. Why SVT? Why is supraventricular? Narrow complex. Why tachycardia? What is the heart rate? Heart rate? 150. Regular, irregular? Regular. So it is SVT. So the treatment is adenosine. Question number eight. By looking at the ECG trace below, determine what the diagnosis would be. We attack again, yeah? So five. Next one. Seventy-two, that's the same thing. When take ablation. Question number ten. Sixty old man following ECG. What is the next step in that management? What is the diagnosis there? Yeah, narrow QRS complex is above the ventricle, so but irregular. So this is AFib. So treatment is metoprolol. Treatment will be metoprolol. 40 year old man, bradycardia, the following ECG. Bradycardia, the following ECG. Yeah, PR interval is prolonged. But is there just, uh, the QRS missing anywhere? No. no. So is a, is a PR interval constant everywhere? Yes. Yeah, so this is. First degree. So second degree, I don't tell you the name. What is the name of the second degree heart block? Morbis type 1 and type 2. Morbis type 1, Morbis type 2. But the type 1 has got one more name. Venke back. Venke back, yeah? All of you know that. Okay, 12. Question number 12. City to man, slow palpitation. Slow palpitation. Yeah, yeah, gold medal if you tell me what it is. Second degree. Which one? Mobis type one. Why? One is missing and another is PR interval is not the same. 
We are not the same. Look at the first complex and the third one. You can easily make out. Okay? So they are not the same. So this is type 1. Mom is type 1. Next one. Next one. Enter what am I? Are we agree? Yes. Next one. <laughs> Just because somebody says false doesn't mean he is right. Two, three, yeah. Very no? See, present the chest pain. Don't forget the symptom. In front of my? Where? Which, which lead? Two, what is it? Two, three, yeah. Two, three, what is it there? Is it a still vision? Yeah. To say MI in limb leads, the ST ratio should be minimum 2 millimeter height. Height. How do you know the height? One small square is what is the height? One millimeter. So it should be two more than two millimeter, means two small squares. In limb leads, the ST elevation should be more than two small squares to say it is MI. The slight ST elevation, but it's not more than two small squares. That's not ST elevation. That's not for MI ST elevation. So what is this? Non ST elevation, MI. Because the patient has chest pain, but there's no ST elevation, this is non ST elevation, MI. All of you understood? And in the cardiology notes it's mentioned that for the limb lead it has to be 1 millimeter and for chest lead it's 2 millimeter. Oh yes, you are right. It should be right, yeah. 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 Other way around, in limb lead it should be 1 millimeter elevation, in chest lead it should be more than 2 millimeter. Okay, yes, I made a mistake, it's the other way around. In limb lead it should be more than 1 millimeter elevation, in chest lead it should be more than 2 millimeter elevation. Okay? So, but here is not, well, you can say it's ST elevation, but it's not very clear though. Just about, because the ECG is not very clear, you can't make out. But anyway, you know how to look for non ST elevation am I? Next one, question number 15. 60 year old man, single P, following ECG. Type 2. Type 2? Okay, what is this? What is this? First of all, is it second degree? No. 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 The problem is we should have a long rhythm shape because it's too short to comment on that. Missing QRS, there are just P waves in between. Yeah. The, the point is between the two P waves there is a QRS missing but you can't make out whether it's constantly with the, you know, is it constantly missing everywhere like that? You can't make out. Uh, but do you think is a 30 grad block? Do you think? If it's 30 grad block, the P wave would have been before the QRS, after the QRS, it could be anywhere. Do you see anywhere like that? No. no. So wherever you see P wave, it is before the QRS. You don't see after, the, so it is unlikely to be complete. Most likely QRS is missing. It's regularly missing one after the there's one QRS, next QRS missing, next QRS is there, next QRS missing, next QRS is there, next QRS missing. That's what is happening. So there's no be second degree. But the problem is you should have had a long rhythm shift to comment on that. But this and does also, not sir, in case of third degree hard loss, the QRS will be wide. You said that. And here it's Third degree, what I said, QRS is wide, but not always. It depends on the level where the, the damage is. Okay? So don't say that, don't think that the QRS will always be wide in third degree. It may be wide, may not be wide in third degree. So don't depend on that. But the heart rate, the heart rate is so low. It should be a third degree, no? Well, it could be third degree, it could be second degree, just because uh, a body cardiac can be there in second degree also. So I told you, but for me, this is second degree heart block because uh, the in third degree, the, Q, the P wave, sometimes it comes after the <coughs> QRS. Wherever you see here, it, it never came after. It always came before. So it looked like a second degree because I told you, if you see one QRS, next QRS is missing there. Next QRS is there, next QRS is missing. Next QRS is there, next QRS may be missing. 
So it is looks like second degree. Uh, if it is second degree, which one? Type one, type two. This is type two because the PR, the PR interval is constant. Okay, next one. We are sixteen. That is WPW syndrome. Yeah. Can you see the delta wave? Short PR. Okay, the last one. Hernia. He, he was arrested for as a pre-op assessment for hernia operation. Yeah, he had no symptom. He was just assessing him as a this fitness for surgery. So he is normal. That means normal. He is normal. Okay. So I finished teaching ECG.